drive, but scored on their third 15-yard touchdown run by Jalen Klein. And then they had a fifth and final drive of the first half, helped out after they stopped a fake punt. It had a seven-yard touchdown run by Bell. Is that pass intended for Hunter Watson falls incomplete? It'll be second down and 10 for the Marauders. We have the sophomore Bell trying to get it to his tall target. Uh, another sophomore, a wide receiver, and Hunter Watson, 6'1", 170 pounds. And, and again, when, when Bell is missed, it's, it's been a couple couple yards over the head of the receivers. I suppose better that than short, where it might be intercepted by the trailing defender. Second and 10 from the 22. Fake the handoff, Bell will flip it off to the near side where it's caught on the run by Hassan Moore. Sprints across the 40 yard line, brought down by a pair, Ricky McCrary, as well as Travis Terrell. And that ball to the 41 yard line, a first down, a 19 yard game. Now, this is the first time we've seen this hurry up offense from St. Peter's. For the most part, they've lined up quickly, but then kind of sit back, look to the. Hoping they can match and improve that this season. Big boot to the far right side. Fair catch called for and made right there. As Roy Alexander at the five yard line, and that's where U Albany will get started. Let's take go head down to the sideline where Maddie Jones is. She'll fill us in on the U Albany quarterback situation. Roll it. What am I looking to utilize that quarterback? A transfer from New Mexico in CJ Montez, whose athleticism and speed has been demonstrated in his carrying capabilities, totaling 22 rushes last season. Although he was not seen very often involved in the passing game, Coach Conlin thinks he had made unbelievable strides. We'll get back to Maddie on Reese Poffenbarger in just a moment as uh, she's introducing us to CJ Montez, the quarterback on the Fordham side of the field. Faisal Aiden with the call, with the Faisal Aiden rather, the transfer from Utah gets the early call. Loss of two on that. Tackle made by Sam Burkell. We'll call his number a lot today for Fordham, the sophomore defensive tackle out of Cincinnati, Ohio. Second down and 12 now for the Great Danes. Poffenbarger alone, five receivers. Reese drops, looks over the middle. Connection there made. Roy Alexander's got it. He's out to the 30 yard line. Gain of seven on that. It'll be third down and five. Let's take a look at the starting lineup at this one for this one. And that's, and that's where Roy Alexander's so dangerous, right, Rich? Over the middle of the open field there, that's where he's dangerous in space. Take a look, Poffenbarger, Aiden, Hicks, Parker, Alexander in the slot, and Renninger for the Great Danes and their key players. Third down and five. Veteran starting offensive line for the Great Danes returning as well. Single setback. Poffenbarger drops. Looks outside, has a man, connection there to Roy Alexander who makes the catch at the 38-yard line. It'll be a first down for the UAlbany Great Danes. No, no, the side judge comes in <laughs> and waves that off. Initially called a catch. Side judge comes in, like you said, Rich, overrules it. William Moran, the side judge over there, the field judge over there, Anthony Florio, is the, um, the official in this one, the referee. We'll get another look at it here. Another look, yeah, Roy Alexander been a favorite target of, uh, of Reese Poffenbarger last year. Already targeted twice on this opening drive as he looks to the far sideline. Knocked away. Yeah. Dale Perkins doing the job over there. So it'll be a punt situation for UAlbany after a what looked like a first down coming right out of the box, which Greg Cattuso talked about, wanting to get out to a big start, a good start. No big plays allowed on defense. So now they'll get the opportunity to flip over to the other side and see if they can set the tone. I'm just as excited as Coach Catuso to really see this defensive unit back on the field, right? They allowed 34.1 points a game last season, Rich. Looking to obviously improve as they did the second half of the season on the defensive side. Tyler Pestula to punt. Cole Thornton, the return man, he's back at the 17-yard line, takes a fair catch right there. A little extracurricular pushing and shoving there. As we've got some early jawing in this one, Michael, which yeah. is what you expect. Yeah. Two teams eager to play each other. Yeah, it, it's been, what, 11 months since they last played, right, Rich? 48-45 uh, final at, uh, at Fordham. First and 10 here for 
the Fordham Rams with their new quarterback, C.J. Montez, who Matty Jones told you about a moment ago, the transfer from New Mexico, 6'2", 190, out of Pasadena, California. Julius Luffridge on the carry, pushed outside. Deshaun Winston ties him up at the 20, gain of two. Good to see there some action from Winston, one of those two guys that were transfers coming in right from Temple. The safety covers a lot of ground, good ball hawk, and a nice job by the Great Danes forcing Luffridge outside, and he makes a nice uh, ankle tackle there. Second and 11 is a loss of one on that play. Luffridge again, this time left side, goes over that left tackle, out to the 25-yard line. Tackle by number four. Take a look at that Anton defense, Junkage, too, Rich, yeah. uh, coming back. I mean, you, you return all four of your front guys there, and Simon, Hills, Greeny, and Junkage, along with Charles, Dylan, Kelly, whose name I'm sure we're going to see a lot, and I'm interested to see Amir Hall, the, the transfer corner from Richmond, and Deshaun Winston, who already just made a tackle on the first play. Secondary, a key for you, Albany, a weak spot last year, and they really feel with the two transfers, they've improved that area greatly. Third and five now. Montez, he will run. Nice pressure there by the Great Danes as number 21, Brian Abraham, steps up to make the tackle. He had some help. That'll force a punt situation for Fordham. Could have asked for a better start here on defense for the Great Danes, right, Rich? Getting a little three and out, something they did not do a lot early on in the season last year. You're seeing guys converge on the ball in a group, not a lot of one-on-one -on -one individual tackling. Good to see. Elijah Hill's in there as well to help out. Will Hazlitt. We'll kick this one away. Number 10, Jackson Parker back to receive. Jackson Parker to return for the Great Danes. High spiraling kick. Parker at the 25. Takes it opposite field. He's got some room to go. He picked up five. Out over the 40. Nice tackle there. As Fordham steps in with number 88, Jaden Callen to make the tackle. 11.30 to go here. We're scoreless. A couple of punts. You're watching UAlbany football on Flow Sports. We're back after this. Back here at Tom and Mary Casey Stadium celebrating like the night, the Leukemia and Lymphoma Foundation fundraiser that has raised a tremendous amount of money for Leukemia and Lymphoma Research. Congratulating some survivors on the field with us tonight. Just a, a great scene right there here at Tom and Mary Casey Stadium. Great Danes set to go back on offense. Now let's go down to Maddie Jones on the sidelines. She's got the story on Reese Poffenbarger. You open his quarterback, Reese Poffenbugger, who was just named to the 2023 Walter Payton Award preseason watch list, will look to build up his historic 2022 season. Last time these two teams matched up, Poffenbugger broke the UAlbany single game passing record with 412 yards. 
However, it was not enough to pull off the win. Reflecting on this, both Poffenbogge and coach Gattuso mentioned the need to limit mental errors with a next play mentality to hopefully gain a different result here tonight. Thanks very much, Maddie. Appreciate that. And we'll have Maddie from the sidelines throughout the day. Appreciate her being part of this team tonight here on Flow Sports. Beautiful night for football here at Tommy Mary Casey Stadium. Second opportunity on offense for the Great Danes. Single setback next to Poffenbarger. Goes outside. Connection made there to Roy Alexander. Cuts back towards the middle out to the 45-yard line. It'll be a gain of four for Alexander. Tackle made by Claudie Robinson, number 90. How about three targets already, two receptions for, for Roy Alexander, number two for the Great Danes. Kind of that uh, safety net, security blanket. Can cover, you can line him up outside or in the slot. And Rich, a lot of times you'll see him used as a feature back, an additional back and an end around as well. Got tremendous speed, Roy Alexander, the junior out of Fort Myers, Florida. Here's Hayden, gets whacked there. Number 34, Matt Jaworski steps in, gets some help from number 23, Mike Pareto. And Aiden is uh, the guy right now that appears to be the feature back for the Great Danes, but this is for the first time in a while, right? The, the Great Danes have had Carl Mofor, Todd Sibley, and you don't really have maybe a key guy yet, but Aiden coming from Utah brings a lot of experience. And down on the field, number 48, that's James Conway. Huge key for yep. Fordham. That would be a tremendous loss. The junior out of Omaha, who 127 tackles last year. Yeah. 2023 NCAA FCS preseason All-American James Conway covers a lot of ground. He's essentially their Dylan Kelly and, and then some in that linebacker position. Tremendous speed, can drop back into coverage. Surely hope for Joe Conlon, the Fordham Rams side, that Conway's all right. Getting some help up off the turf right at the center. He pops up to his feet and then walks off under his own power. So that, that certainly looks good for James Conway. Great Danes will have a third and four when they come back. See if we can see our first third down conversion as uh, both teams open up with three and outs to start this game. Not how it started last year, that's for sure. 48-45 last year. A lot of points. Over 1,000 yards. Went split far. Alexander comes into the slot. Low snap there. Poffenbarger handles it. Quick outside. Catch made there by Levi Wentz. First down, Great Danes. Pushed out of bounds by number 13, Neil Perkins. That's good enough for and good stuff there from Levi Wentz, right? A guy from the transfer portal that already had prior connection to Reese Poffenbarger at Old Dominion. Two years at ODU for Wentz. One yard gain there for the Great Danes. Richard Hofus in on the tackle. Good to see face all Aiden. Get a positive gain. Last couple carries, Rich, have been uh, going backwards. Move Renninger. Nice fake there, outside connection. Good tackle to save it there. That could have been a big gainer for Cameron Blair with a nice tackle as a nice catch made by Marquise Dietz. Yeah, Dietz and Wentz, both ODU guys, Old Dominion guys, getting involved early. That's something Reese Poffenbarger liked to do a lot last season. He gets the ball out quick in a hurry and likes to find his guys on a little simple out route on the outside of the sidelines there. Nice little simple catch, and great Danes keep the ball moving here in a nice drive. Two first downs on this drive, two backs now. First time we've seen that, Poffenbarger right in the center, fakes the handoff, he'll drop straight back, has all day to pass. Going deep, has a man, just a bit too long, as Roy Alexander went just over the end line. Made the catch, but a little bit too far. Good look there by Reese Poffenbarger. I tell you what, really good protection up front by this great Danes O-line, and Poffenbarger's watching that post route the entire time and waiting for Alexander to break. Just got it there a bit too late. Pretty good coverage there by the Rams in the secondary. Lola the Tulip, 77, the freshman on that right tackle side, really did a nice job holding up his man to give Poffenbarger an extra second. Second and 10. Two receivers to the right, one to the near side. Hand off up the middle to Perkins. Larkins, I should say. 
Graduate student out of Bentley, another one of the many transfers on this team, Michael. Yeah, absolutely. A lot of transfers coming in. Great Danes did a nice job acquiring a lot of key players in addition to bringing some back, especially on the offensive side of the ball, Rich. And I tell you what, so far the run defense looks pretty solid up the middle for the uh, Fordham Rams, whether it's Larkins or whether it's Aiden. Seems like the, the Great Danes on these first few carries have nowhere to go. It's just clogged up in the middle. Cameron Blair, Claudie Robinson stuff in the hole that time for the Rams. Now three receivers to the right. Levi Wentz to the near side. Handoff goes to Larkins. He gets outside. You said they were stuffing the inside there. They went outside and got some positive yardage with Blair making the tackle. It's nice to think that the coaches are maybe listening to the broadcasters up here, right? A little, a little handoff on the outside, right, Rich? Exactly. Squag in the middle. Nice job getting outside. Little separation. Nice little hesitation move. And the Great Danes keep it moving there. First down here, Larkins will go directly behind Poffenbarger. Two receivers to his right, Wentz to the left, Alexander in the slot. Now they bring Dietz in motion, and a flag flies. Looks like a false start penalty on the Great Danes. Here's the official Anthony Fleury. False start. Offense, number 73. Five-yard penalty. First down. Scott Hausman, the center for the Great Danes, getting tagged for five yards there. That'll move the Danes back to first and 15. The rare penalty, too, by a stable veteran of this offensive line, the, the center there, Scott Hausman. Larkins with a nice 12-yard run, but then they move back five, so first and 15 from the 22. Larkins to the right of Poffenbarger. Two receivers near side this time. Poffenbarger going to the corner. One-on-one -on -one coverage out there, and a flag flies. It'll be a pass interference call on uh, number 13, Neil Perkins. Yeah, tight coverage by Perkins there, right? Uh, and also the key here, pass interference, what it's going to be called if this is the call in the corner, Rich. It's a lot of times the receiver. I don't know. There is contact. A lot of times when the defensive back doesn't turn around, something's called. But Perkins did turn around. Looked like some contact down there in that far corner of that end zone. Yeah. There is no foul for defensive pass interference on the play. Second down. The referees got together and decided to pick that one up, so it'll be second down and 15. A good call by the officials. Perkins turned around and actually made a nice play at the ball. Not too much contact, just good coverage. From the 22-yard line, second down and 15 for the Great Danes. Not allowing Levi Wentz any room to be able to catch that ball. Perkins, four tackles in seven games last year for the senior out of Douglasville, Georgia. So second 15 here for U for Albany. Larkins to the right of Poffenbarger. They move Renninger in motion, throws outside, has Larkins there, makes the catch, one-on-one, -on -one, breaks a tackle there, gets out over the 20, slips another tackle, he'll get down inside the 15. Nice run by Larkins, tackle made there by Perkins. Good stuff there by, by Nate Larkins, right? I mean, coming in from Bentley, you're seeing face all Aiden and Nate Larkins being used. Poffenbarger was looking Julian Hicks' way to the left side, dumps it off to his back, and already showing some elusiveness in the open field, making multiple guys miss on that Fordham Ram defense. Nice play by Larkins. Gain of nine by Larkins as he's got off to a very quick start here at running back as we went one and one A we talked about with Aiden and Perk and Larkins. Aiden back in. And Poffenbarger gets the Fordham line to jump. We'll see which way this goes, though. Offside, defense number 34, five-yard penalty, third down. Good cadence by Poffenbarger as he gets the uh, Michael Maciejewski to jump. That's something Poffenbarger was so good at doing last year, Rich, right? The double clap or whatever he sees on the other side where he sees a, uh, an opposing linebacker or defensive lineman entering. He did it probably against Monmouth about four or five times in about two series, so he's very good at uh, reading the opposing team's cadence. First time we've seen Carter Moses and another flag, and Fordham says this one's on Albany. Moses went in motion, looked like there was some movement on the interior of Albany's line, but it's hard to see, say rather, if it was created by Fordham. The referees will get together to discuss. Ball start. Offense number 70. Five-yard penalty. Third down. So the five they gain, they give well. back with Mosier. Yep, that'll, uh, the self-inflicted penalties and mistakes, something that Coach Katuso I know talked about a lot at the end of last season, too, and this season, the unforced, those unforced errors. 
something that ended up costing this team in a close game against Fordham last time. When you had a chance at third and short, now you want to be able to execute five yards backed up with a third and six at the 13. 6.24 to go. Clock is rolling. Aiden to the right of Poffenbarger. Three receivers near side. Now they put Renninger in motion. He sets on the right. Low snap. Picked up by Poffenbarger. Quick over the middle. Got the connection there to Dietz. Breaks one tackle. Gets down to the six-yard line. Seven-yard gain there. Tackle made by number 23, Mark Preto. Nice move by Dietz to try to gain a couple more yards there. Cuts in. Simple slant coming off the left side. He makes the, uh, the middle linebacker there a miss in Conway. And the Great Danes get the Another first down. Fourth first down of the drive for the Great Danes. Poffenbarger now 6-9 for 48 yards. Aiden to Poffenbarger's right. Two receivers stacked far side, two near side. Again, the low snap. Poffenbarger outside, touchdown! Connection to Roy Alexander as Alexander just turned around. The ball was on the spot. Six-yard touchdown, and the Great Danes are on the board. That is such a pretty play right there, and a great throw by Reese Poffenbarger, Rich. One-on-one, -on -one, simple fade route to the right corner of the end zone, and he puts it right in the perfect spot for his receiver, Roy Alexander, to make the catch with Nall Perkins in really good coverage. That's a great throw and a great catch. Great Danes got the early lead. Alexander, 471 yards last year, picks up the early touchdown here. John Apolko on to add the extra point. Great crowd over on the Key Bank berm, getting a perfect look at that catch by Roy Alexander. Kick is up, and Apolko has knocked it through. And with 5.30 to go, UAlbany is on top of Fordham 7-0. We'll be back with more first quarter action from Tom and Mary Casey Stadium. You're watching UAlbany football on Flow Sports. Fired up the grill for one hot dog? Seriously? Hot dogs. Better with Pepsi. <sighs> Who do you want by your side when you're about to do something amazing? It's not about how much you have or who you know. This is a matter of trust. Because one can do it alone, but two can do it even better. CephQ and Capcom are now Broadview, giving you the power and service you deserve from your financial partner. When you want to know who's by your side, Open your eyes and take a look around. That's where we'll be. Welcome to Broadview. At the University at Albany, we see greatness in you. There's passion and purpose, a fierce curiosity, ready to blaze big ideas and tackle the tough questions. We see grit, drive, determination. The University at Albany is home for dreamers and achievers just like you, the world needs greatness, and you are one of the greats. Burgers, better with Pepsi. 10 years ago, UAlbany opened its season at home. The last time that happened, Greg Cazuzzo's first game, and it was a beauty of an ending versus Holy Cross. The ball comes free, and UAlbany's going the other way. Are you kidding me? Touchdown, Great Danes. That is Neil Morrison. A pop, and I mean a big pop. Ball comes free, and Neil Morrison... Neil Morrison with the big pop there. You heard it from Roger <laughs> Weiland. 14-13, UAlbany beats Holy Cross. The last time they had a season opener here at Tom and Mary Casey Stadium. And boy, was that a good one. It feels like we were talking with uh, Coach Katuso, you know, and he says it feels like just yesterday. It's been 10 years. Hard to believe that the last time they had a, uh, you know, a home opener here was 2014. What a wild ending and great call by Raj on that one as well. 39-57 and 57 in 10 years for Greg Gattuso. You go back and look at that 9-5 and five in 2019, the NCAA win at home. 
really things looking bright. Had some injury situations, some transfers that have slowed things for a little bit. But Coach Catuso, very positive about this U Albany team this year, as is Coach Conlon about his Fordham side. Absolutely. And Coach Catuso, one thing he gets is the respect and love from his players. Great ambassador and uh, represents the program, the university, very well. Good, great track record and success of guys, you know, having a chance to go to the uh, to the next level, right? A guy like Thomas Greeny, leading re re receiver last year, a member of the uh, Cleveland Browns, Juwan Green, to name a few. And uh, Carl Mofor, who's now coaching over at RPI as well. Congratulations, Juwan Green, recently signing with the Kansas City Chiefs. So yeah. uh, nice opportunity there to catch uh, from, you know, an OK quarterback. I was going to say, he's not too bad, right? <laughs> Great Danes on top, 7-0 on the Alexander six-yard touchdown pass. Sam Hogan out of Glens Falls, New York, set to kick this one off. Technically, Hudson Falls, New York. Played his high school ball at Glens Falls. Hogan will let this one fly. Deep to return is MJ Wright. He's got it at the four-yard line. Wright's a speedster. Looks for a seam. Has a spot there. Nice tackle made by UAlbany's number nine, Landon Alexander. Got to be careful with MJ Wright. You're, you're spot on, Ridge. He's a speedster. He's looking for any little crevice or seam to try and get through. It looks like you almost have one there, if not tackled late at 30. From the 30-yard line, that'll be first and 10 for Fordham. So Fordham off the punt and their first series. Back out with C.J. Montez at quarterback. He'll have Luffridge to his left. Luffridge, 940 yards last year and eight touchdowns. Really doing a nice job complimenting Trey Sneed. 11.92 for Sneed and five scores. Here's Luffridge up the middle, breaks a tackle there. Gets out, pick up of nine as he's stopped there by the Great Danes number seven, Larry Walker Jr. Larry Walker Jr., good, uh, good versatile safety. And you now pair him up with the transfer from Temple and Deshaun Winston. Going to be exciting to see those guys, ball hawks and good coverage. See if Montez and Fordham could try some deep balls with them uh, way back in the secondary. Luffridge again, this time nothing doing. Stuffed in there by Brian Abraham, number 21. Abraham one to watch, says Greg Atuso. He had a big smile on his face when he talked about how athletic Abraham yep. has been and how well he's played in preseason. First and 10, though, for the Rams, their first of the game. Ball at the 41-yard line. Montez, a little pressure there. He'll roll to the right, has some running room instead, lays it off over the middle, connects with Luffridge. Tackle made by Dylan Kelly. Eight on the gain for the Rams. It'll be second down. Check that, make it seven. It'll be second down and three. So I have to say we're going to be calling Dylan Kelly's name quite a bit tonight, Rich. Led the team with 97 tackles last year. He covers a lot of ground, and he knows how to wrap guys up. One of the most pure tacklers in the conference. Montez again. Feels the pressure, goes outside of Luffridge. No one out there in the flat. First down yardage for Luffridge as he gets it out over the 45-yard line to the 44. Tackle by number five, Bill Hackett, giving assist also to number 31, Jaleel Johnson. It's good awareness here by Montez, too. He's starting to feel some pressure in the pocket, just dumps it off at a little, little check down to his running back, Luffridge, who's been busy already, not to, not to mention can, can catch the ball as well, in addition to... Quite a few carries to start this game for the Rams. Nine yards for Luffridge as he's the workhorse back this year for Joe Conlon's team. Ricky Parks this time as he takes it out over the 30. Another first down as he picks up 12. Tackle there made by Deshaun Winston. And something the Great Danes struggled with at times last year was that run defense and giving up some big plays on the ground. Looks solid on their first defensive drive here. Starting to see Fordham be able to pick it up and get some more yardage on the ground. Inside block kicked out Kelly and created a running lane for Ricky Parks. Parks a Utah transfer like Faisal Aiden. Big run there by Parks as he's loose into the secondary out over the 15-yard line down to the 11. Larry Walker Jr. again with the tackle, but it'll be another first down for Fordham as this drive going very well for Joe Conlon's team. Tell you what, really good blocking here up the middle by the, the offensive line as Ryan Joyce and Nolan Iola led the way to try to create that hole as Parks has had nobody near him these last two carries. Stacked wide receivers near and far. Parks moves to the left of Montez. Now Montez looks to the sideline. Play clock at 15, so plenty of time. From the 14-yard line. First and 
keep an eye on MJ Wright, who's near side. Montez throws the deep right shoulder pass to Wright, went over his head. Big grab a jersey there in the corner. Gonna say, yeah, Kevon angry, right? And it might have might have been grabbing a little bit there. Lucky to maybe not get a, 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 a penalty flag thrown here, but another look here as Montez drops back, going right to the corner of the end zone. He knew he was going a little overthrown, so that's probably why the official's like, all right, we're just not going to throw the flag. No sense on that one. There was no chance he was going to catch the ball unless all of a sudden he was Shaquille O'Neal's height. <laughs> right. Parks again. This time nothing doing on that right side. Brian Abraham stepped in there and filled that gap. Maybe a gain of two. We'll give him two, second down and eight. Check that, make it third down at eight. This is a big uh, big play here for this Great Danes defense, right? Try to stop a team in Fordham that uh, converted a very high percentage in the red zone, as did the Great Danes. They were 86% last year in the red zone overall. It seemed like Fordham had their way in the red zone a year ago at their place, whatever they wanted. So this is a big third and long here to try to stop if you're the Great Danes. Man-to-man -man coverage in the secondary for the Danes. Garrett Cody, number seven, matched up one-on-one -on, -one on that far side. That's where they're looking inside, and the pass is not connected with Cody as Montez led him just a little bit too far. Danes with a hold on third, and Cole, Ed, rather Fordham will go for the field goal. A good coverage, a little slip there at the end by the transfer, Amir Hall, 6'1", 201-pound junior, had decent coverage, but uh, Fordham Bench wanted a flag, nothing there, as so he just tripped on his own feet. Brandon Peskin on for the 30-yard field goal attempt. Transfer from Syracuse, 12 of 17 last year, had two field goals against the Great Danes. Kick is up and off the scoreboard. As you know it went true blue. <laughs> 7-3 with 1.16 to go as Peskin knocks home the 30-yard field goal. You got to look at that as a victory if you're UAlbany to hold them to a field goal there after Parks had 30 yards of running in two plays alone. 100%, Rich. Yeah, spot on there because this is a Great Danes team that, you know, throughout the first five or six games last season found themselves playing from behind, could not get stops when they needed to. That's why I put it as one of the, the keys to the game, be able to get a defensive stop in a big spot, third and eight, on your 12-yard line, that's a big stop to be able to, to, hold, uh, to hold Fordham to just three points. And now you get the ball back to, to Reese Poffenbarger, who, again, last year, you know, this is a guy who was battling with three other quarterbacks, didn't know if he was going to be the starting quarterback. And now you can see the confidence is there. He's ready. He knows he's the quarterback. He knows the chemistry with a lot of these guys, and they are loaded at wide receiver. I'm very interested and excited to see how Ian Renninger will be this year, too. Big shoes to fill with Thomas Greeny Lee. People talking a lot about Renninger, both coaches. Uh, you know, even even uh, Joe Conlon was mentioning that Renninger did some good things again them last year. One catch for 15 yards against Fordham, but did some good things in the blocking yeah, game, also exactly. in the receiving game to open up other players. Yeah, it's 6'5", 254. He is quite the uh, physical frame to block. Alexander on the right side from the five. Breaks a tackle there, gets out over the 30. Nice return by Alexander out to the 34-yard line. Tackle made by number 85, Matt Biron. That's the thing about Alexander. He's a great receiver, but he's very good with uh, the return, uh, whether it's punt or kick and special team. Small stature at 5'9", but he is a tough guy to bring down. A couple nice moves here on this return to give the Great Danes, again, some pretty solid field position on back-to-back -back possessions. Broke two tackles there as he takes it out to the 33-yard line, and that's where Reese Poffenbarger will put this offense back into motion with a minute eight to go here in the first quarter. Sun just starting to set here over Tom and Mary Casey Stadium. Really a nice night and a great crowd. Poffenbarger rolls a bit, looking long, has time, goes outside, almost intercepted there. A little push in the back. I'm gonna say Cam Blair there, the, the corner, looked like he had a little bit of contact. We're take another look here, Rich, but Poffenbarger again, a lot of time. Nice protection by the offensive line. He's looking again over the middle, trying to bait the defense back, and but it's not going to be caught. Julian Hicks is on the ground out of bounds anyway. Yeah, Blair might have been out of bounds even if he held on right. to that one. Poffenbarger just four interceptions all year last year. So second and ten. Aiden, left side. Gang tackle there. Bottom of that pile is number 96, Eli Armstrong. Also give assist there to number 48, James Conway, back on the field after he went off with a, for a quick look on an injury. Yeah, Conway 
obviously sometimes is tricky, right? He'll sometimes line up back in coverage, but right there disguised in coverage, and he just goes right through and contacts face all Aiden right away. Third and 10 now. Easton into motion. Puts three receivers on the far side. Poffenbarger looks over there. Goes outside, just over the top. Couldn't hold on to by Jackson Parker. As he looped it just over the top of the defensive back. Perkins. And now fourth down for the Great Danes. That's always a tough one, right? Reese Poffenbarger. I think Parker's anticipating a deflection. Kind of throws him off a little bit. Still, Poffenbarger's reaction pretty funny. Like he thought his guy had it there. And Parker threw a good ball. Just couldn't come down with it. Pastula, 52 yards on the punt the first time for the Great Danes. He's back to kick a second one away. Yeah, Pastula, one thing he can do is he can boom it and help his defense try to pin Fordham back here, see if he can do it again. Delaware transfer. Heavy rush here from Fordham. Single back. It's Thornton. He'll take it at the ninth at the 14-yard line. Slips a tackle there. He's got big running room near side over towards the U Albany sideline. Gets an excellent block by number 30. Jack Kaiser, who did a nice job of holding up his man to get him out to the 45-yard line, over the 45-yard line. Tackle made by U Albany's Jackson Parker. Great move, right? Just one little, you know, side stutter step. And I think it was Brevin Easton coming down 13, completely gets juked. Nice run back here as Fordham set up at their own 47 with a play to go before the end of the first quarter here, Rich. Nicole Thornton showing some speed and elusiveness. Give that tackle to Austin Mojour out there on special teams. So really good field position, as MJ, you mentioned. Four receivers now and a single setback in Luffridge. Montez looking, throws long, has a man connected there at the 20-yard line. Caught by Jaden Allen as he was wide open behind the secondary. And that's Amir, uh, Amir Hall, the, the new transfer for the Great Danes. And immediately, separation off the line is Fordham with a big play with Chad Parker. Big catch there for Fordham as that will take them into the first quarter timeout with a little bit of momentum. 7-3, Great Danes on top of Fordham. We're back after this on Flow Sports.
Third game of the regular season last year when these two teams met at Fordham. U Albany led by 21 in the fourth. Trey Snead erased it all with that touchdown right there and put Fordham back on top. The Great Danes with Reese Poffenbarger at quarterback. The freshman throwing long. It was incomplete. You'll have to trust me on that one. 48-45, <laughs> yeah. the final score in that game. Series ser season, the all-time series leading led by Fordham 5-4, the 10th meeting between these two teams. So last year and the last time Albany won back in 2007 at Fordham. 2006, the last time they played here. That was a Fordham win, 9-7 the final. Incomplete pass on first down. Now Luffridge on second down. Finds a hole over that right side. Gets shoved back there. Jaleel Johnson in there. Got some help as well. Let's see if the Great Danes can go two for two here on stopping Fordham on third down here. Get that red zone defense up again. It's looked good so far. And go back to that game from a year, just shy of a year ago, Reggie. A wild game. Reese Poffenbarger breaks the Albany right. single game record thrown for 412 yards. How about over 1,000 yards of total offense? The game was wild. Like a track meet. Yeah. Luffridge to the left of Montez. Montez looks over the middle. Quick pass there. Knocked away. Nice defense by Deshaun Winston. Did a beautiful job getting the right hand in there to knock that one away. I'll tell you what, that's why you bring in a guy like Deshaun Winston from a school like Temple. Has some elite level of competition there for college football. And, and, and Winston right here, you're right, backs off. Great read. Gets that hand in there. Knocks it away from Makai Felton. Two for two, stopping Fordham and forcing a field goal here in the red zone. 21-yard field goal. Peskin. Kick is up. Well rushed there by the Albany special teams, but drilled by Brandon Peskin out of Melville, New York. Second field goal for Peskin. Matches the number he had last year against Albany. That makes it 7-6. Albany on top of Fordham in this one. And as you said, Michael, an important defensive stand right there for Albany. Hold them to field goals, score touchdowns. You win a lot of games that way. Absolutely right. And if you're looking at it where Fordham's had the ball, you feel like Fordham should be winning, right? But that, what translates with that is some great red zone defense so far by the Great Dance. And standing strong on a third and eight, standing strong on a third and four, you still have a one-point lead. Let's see what now in sec his second year, offensive coordinator Jared Ambrose can try to dial up as, you know, they have a plethora of, of wide receivers to go to. And it's good to see Larkins and, and Aiden uh, used so far. Excited to see how they're going to be utilized all season long. Ambrose won a couple of titles, of course, with Delaware. The CAA titles down at Delaware. Had a little hand in what Joe Flacco's success with a Hens of UD. Yes, he did. And he has obviously great chemistry and a great relationship with Reese Poffenbarger. I mean, all the accolades aside, obviously we've talked to Reese many times. He doesn't care about that. He wants to go out here and win and get this team off to a good start. Peskin will boot this one deep. Alexander again, this time at the four. He's got blockers out ahead, has room on the, other, on the outside. Big hole there for Alexander. He'll take it down the sideline, out to the 47-yard line. 43-yard return for Alexander before he gets pushed out of the bounds by number 23, Mark Preto. Special teams wins and loses you football games. And right now the war of field position, the battle for field position, right? Fordham had it. How about an answer by Roy Alexander? He's been utilized. He, he catches a touchdown, and he has had two great returns on back-to-back -back possessions when he's gotten the ball. Almost getting it up to midfield. Impressive. And good blocking on the left sideline by the Great Danes as well. Puts Poffenbarger and the offense in very good position to try to get a score on the board and respond to that field goal. And you can see that blocking on the outside. Easton in motion. Three receivers near side. Low snap there. Nice job by Poffenbarger to pull that one back and keep it himself. Takes it out over the 50. Gain of four. Tackle made there by number 23, Vinny Rugai. Tell you what. You, can, you can't teach, uh, you know, football IQ and some of this natural athleticism that Reese Poffenbarger has. You saw it a lot last year. I mean, also with, you know, only four turnovers, Rich, on the entire season. And right there, right, low snap, the awareness to keep the ball and get positive yardage now in Fordham territory. Preto on the tackle had the wrong number, 23. There's like 120 players, so there's several double say, numbers. Hey, yeah. <laughs> Poffenbarger's pass deflected there. Matt Jaworski got a paw up. The junior out of Buffalo. 
A nice play here by Jaworski on the sideline. He kind of reads what Poffenbarger's doing as it's on far sideline to, to Dietz. That's something Poffenbarger loves to do. Literally not even three seconds get it and go to the sideline. If he's got separation or, in this case, if the if the corner or the secondary man is, is playing off by three or four yards, Reese is going to take advantage. First we've seen of Griffin Waddell, the freshman out of Hudson Falls. Brand new scholarship award winner. Got that just a week and a half ago. Earned it in camp. Stand out at Glens Falls High School during his playing days, but Poffenbarger goes outside. Nice connection there to Dietz. Some running room as he gets to the 35. Tackle made by number 16, Jackson Barletta. And if you're watching it right here, you're looking at uh, potentially most quarterbacks, and Poffenbarger's very good at throwing on the move and under pressure. He was all year last year and already seen a quick first step and some elusiveness by Dietz. Those two know each other, obviously, from their ODU days, Rich. Dietz brought in already a couple catches on the night for the Great Danes. 10-yard gain, first down for U Albany. Poffenbarger toss. Here's Waddell on his first college carry. Gets outside, lays a licking out there, and a flag is thrown. Cameron Blair on the tackle. We'll see what the call is from the far side. I think they get a hold on the Great Danes here with the... Holding. Offense number 87. 10-yard penalty. First down. Renninger trying to lead the block there. Gets tagged for the holding call. So that'll erase Waddell's effort out there. And a 10-yard penalty on the Great Danes will push them back into a second 20 situation. I was going to say, never want to jinx it. That old announcer's jinx, right? But it's been a relatively clean game. Not a lot of penalties so far, but... Now backed up to the 46. It'll be the first and 20 for the Great Danes now. First down and 20 after the penalty. Poffenbarger flushed. He'll carry it. Spins there. Tries to avoid the lick. Gets out to the 47-yard line. Check that 43-yard line. Mark Preto there on the tackle. James Conway to help him out. Nothing like lower in the shoulder trying to lay the boom on a guy like James Conway if you're, you're uh, Reese Boffenbarger, right? We know he's fearless, and we know he's so tough to stop. He can sell guys with a pump fake right there, decides to run, and then just not afraid to initiate contact with a guy that's maybe twice his size. Jared Ambrose on the sideline covered his eyes when he saw that. Yeah. <laughs> Don't want to see your guy number seven go down, but he is fearless, but he's dangerous. We were talking with Ozzie Hutchison this week, Rod, uh, Rich, and, and, you know, he's... He said a mobile quarterback like Reese can make my job a little easier. So the O-line definitely appreciates it. Straight drop back, this time outside. Got the connection there. Has the penalty yardage back as he makes the pass connection to Jackson Parker. Blair on the coverage makes the tackle. Parker, along with, you know, Julian Hicks, Roy Alexander, kind of that three-headed monster last year. Parker had some big games, but... Now, Parker was a guy that was quiet for some games, but would always step up and seem to make a big play when the Great Danes needed him. Seems like number 10's in the right spot at the right time when they need a big play. Third and seven here. Big third down play for the Great Danes. Single back. Poffenbarger may have done it again. As big number 93, Peter Shalhoub, was into the neutral zone. Let's see if he was drawn off. Offside. Defense number 65. Five-yard penalty. Third down. So for the second time in the game, an offside call. Yep. He's so good at it again. Two for two, Offenbarger, trying call to get that. Called 65, but 65 wasn't out there. It was 93 Shalhoub. Three receivers to the left. A lot of movement going on. May have been a neutral zone infraction on Fordham as there was some movement on the interior section of the Fordham defensive line. Two flags on the field. Big Anthony Faria, what do we got? False start. <laughs> Offense number 70. Five-yard penalty. Third down. The same thing happened last time. Reese yeah. steals five. You Albany gives it back. Not so fast. They're back where they started with another third and seven, but... Yeah, one of these times you hope the Great Dance can take advantage of Reese Poffenbarger giving them a free five yards. But yeah, then the chaos and the confusion on both sides and the miscommunication leads to another self-inflicted false start for the Great Dance. Austin Mosure, another one of the ODU transfers, gets called for that five-yard penalty. So third and seven here. Dane's on top, seven, six. 
Alexander in motion. Give his inside, no Poffenbarger holds it. Now option pass outside to Alexander, who gets popped at the 27-yard line. Just shy of the first down, I believe, but we'll take a look once the sticks come up. Two. Stephen Williams is second with a big stick. What a what a play design here by, by Jared Ambrose, right? You, you fake the handoff. We almost confused us initially. Poffenbarger has it. Nice pitch to Alexander. Fourth and short. Does Coach Catuso keep the offense on the field here? Certainly looks like he's doing that right now. Alexander comes off. Hicks comes off. So they'll go jumbo. Got to say, I like the aggressiveness here. Defense is playing well. They'll split Wentz, but everyone else is in the box. Whistle sounds just as the snap occurred. And a timeout called by the Great Danes. Prior to the timeout, Albany. Their first so Greg Atuso saw something he didn't like, or Jared Arbro saw something he didn't like, and decided to take a timeout there. We'll take a timeout as well. We'll come back and see what UAlbany does on fourth and one. 9.25 to go from Tom and Mary Casey Stadium. 7-6, Great Danes. UAlbany football on Flow Sports brought to you by Broadview, the official financial institution of the Great Danes and the Bone and Joint Center, orthopedic excellence and exceptional care, the Bone and Joint Center. Also by NYSCOPA, representing over 30,000 New York State employees and retirees from the Security Service Unit. So after the Jared Ambrose and Greg Atuso timeout, a fourth and one situation for the Great Danes, 925 on the clock. Poffenbarger, instead of going tight, will be out of the gun this time. They'll move the two tight ends to the right side, two receivers right side as well. Well, this time Nolan the Tulip jumped early there. So now it'll be a five yard penalty on the Great Danes. All start, offense number 87, five yard penalty, fourth down. So Renninger gets called for that, both Ian Latulip on that right side. And that one hurts if you're UAlbany, Rich, because it, right before that Gattuso timeout, the ball was snapped. It looked like Poffenbarger would have had the first down on the fourth and short. You saw the replay. It was Renninger alone on that one, not yeah. with Tulip. So apologies to the big freshman. He's a big guy. I don't want to make him angry. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. <laughs> want to stay on his good side, on the right side there. Big right tackle and one of the new guys, in addition to guys like Hutchison and Hausman returning to protect Number so seven, Reese Poffenbarger. Fourth and seven. Even though the scoreboard says first and ten, that's incorrect. Almost a great catch there by Levi Wentz. But a hold on fourth down for the Fordham Rams. Cameron Blair there in pass coverage. Wentz would have had to make a spectacular catch, and he got two hands on it, but just it was a little bit too hot coming through. Yeah, still a good and well-thrown ball by Poffenbarger, keeping it away from the Fordham Rams defense and hit the hands of... Wentz, but not able to bring it down. See if this defense in first year as defensive coordinator, uh, Bill Nessett, and also co-defensive coordinator Darren Walls. They've done a nice job. Walls played absolutely Notre Dame. 
And so far, so good, allowing Fordham to just six points in about 20 minutes so far. So at this point last year, we were approaching 41 points already. 41 first half points in the game last yeah. year. And here we jar just at 13, and Fordham with an opportunity to try to do something as they hold on downs. Montez, big hit from behind. Deshaun Winston gets in there to make the big hit. Might have been Simon, actually. It was yeah, AJ, AJ Simon. Simon gets thought it was zero, but instead it was Simon who gets through. Just went right by the offensive lineman. And AJ Simon's got the first sack of the season for the Great Danes. Flag there. It'll be a legal procedure on Ford or a false start. Offense number seven. Five yard penalty. Second down. Garrett Cody jumped early there, so they'll move him back five more. Second down and 21 now. Go back to that sack by A.J. Simon, Rich. I mean, for Fordham, wide open down the field again was Jaden Allen, so fortunate to get a sack if you're Ewobany because he was uncovered with a lot of space. The tight end with a big play in the last series. Luffridge off that left side. Check that, it was Ricky Parks off that left side. Tackle made there by Simon. And again, Coach Kazuso optimistic when you bring back some new transfers and you return all four of your front uh, linemen and Anton Junkage, Joseph Green, Elijah Hills, and A.J. Simon. Montez outside. Connection there is made to M.J. Wright. But nowhere near enough for a first down. So it'll be Will Hazlitt to punt. Brian Abraham on the coverage. And the Great Dane defense looking pretty solid here so far. Courtesy of that sack early on by a guy in A.J. Simon who is known for getting in the opposing team's backfields quite a bit. Jackson Parker back to receive a booming kick by Will Hazlitt. Eludes a tackler there. Gets outside, slips another tackle over the 35 to the 40-yard line. Nice return by Parker, and it continues the theme of special team success for the Great Danes. Yes, it does, Rich. A lot of good yardage. By, I mean, you haven't seen the Great Danes really start past their own 35-yard line with these returns by Roy Alexander and another nice one here by uh, Jackson Parker as we take another look, making guys miss, and a guy like James Conway, who does not miss many tackles for Fordham. Impressive stuff. Jaden Allen with the tackle there, so another good field position situation for the Great Danes. First down and 10, Great Dane, UA. One thing you want to see if you're you Albany. Poffenbarger looks good, been able to complete the ball, but see how well and they can improve a little bit on their run game. You know, this first half here. Quick over the middle, nice pass there by, connection rather by Blake to Roy Alexander. D. Rice Williams there with some help from Mark Preto. Alexander's fourth reception, fifth time being targeted so far in this first half, in addition to having quite a few nice long returns to set up the Great Danes in good field position. And they're really moving Roy Alexander around. He's here, he's there, he's everywhere. You know, I mean, really getting the job done for them out there. Swiss Army knife on offense, to say the least, Rich. Poffenbarger checks the sideline, now checks out of the play. He's got a back on either side, two receivers on top. Gives it to Aiden. Far side spin there by Faisal. Gets out over the 50. Down to the 46-yard line. I believe it was Matt Jaworski on the tackle, number 34. Ball carried by zero. Faisal, Aiden, for yeah, Aiden obviously a guy that, that played in the, uh, in the Pac-12. We know all about the shifting of conferences now. We're, a lot of teams at these bigger conferences don't even know where they're at now, but he played at Utah, has some experience there, and he said Albany was one of the first schools that uh, recruited him, and he's already loved the culture that that Coach Catuso's put together, and Coach Catuso's counting on him to be one of the feature backs after you lose a guy like Todd Sibley. Big shoes to fill in the backfield. Graduate student out of Salt Lake City. Poffenbarger steps up, guns it over the middle to Alexander. Good coverage there by D. Rice Williams as he arrived just as the ball was there. James Conway there to help out as well. One thing Poffenbarger's not afraid to do is gun the ball in tight coverage. Risky throw, he's not afraid in double coverage, let alone over the middle, slings it in there. And uh, 
fortunate that that ball wasn't deflected up. A lot of times you see those passes get picked in tight coverage over the middle. As we said earlier, Poffenbarger so efficient with the ball last year, just the four interceptions to go along with his almost 3,000 yards. One yard shy. 24 touchdowns to go with that 2999. Flag flies. Poffenbarger looks, might have a free play. Scrambles, now goes to the left. Plenty of running room. He can get the first down and does down the sideline and more. 16 yard gain for Poffenbarger. We'll see what the flag says. Greg Gattuso is out on the field with the yeah. hands up and he doesn't like it. Offside. Defense number 34. Penalties decline. First down. The wave off the penalty on Jaworski. A nice run by Poffenbarger. Yeah, absolutely. Nice run and you, good call by you, Rich. The free play, right? The initial jump off sides. Obviously, Coach Catuso, it's priceless watching his reaction. He's like, I will quickly decline that. Good stuff by Poffenbarger. Nice blocking by Aiden. Allow him a few extra yards at the end. So first and 10 now in Fordham territory. Aiden on the inside handoff. Nothing, nothing doing there. Coach Cattuso talked about how the, the running attack during preseason hasn't been that impressive. And they chalked a lot of that up to how stout the front four has been in practice. But you can see they're having some troubles here getting that running game established, except on the outside. The outside is where right. they seem to have had some success. Yeah, if you run a little bit of a stretch play like you saw earlier when Larkins took it for the biggest gain on the ground so far. Yeah, up the middle, completely clogged so far. And Fordham's done a nice job at the front. Second down. Outside pass, connection made there to Dietz. Mike Courtney on the coverage. And Courtney used in that Sam linebacker position sometimes, right? Rich Fordham likes to use linebackers, whether it's a buck, a, a, a nose tackle, a lot of guys that could be mixed matched and thrown in coverage or being incorporated in blitzes as well. Third and three. Give up the middle. Little slip tackle there, out for a first down. Nate Larkins does the job as he picks up four yards. He'll have a first down for the Great Danes as his drive will continue. Seeing both Larkins and Aiden get some nice quality touches and carries so far. That's to Larkins from Bentley. So and Aiden obviously from Utah. Aiden checking back in. New Albany's offense has had some, some lengthy drives so far, keeping that Fordham Rams defense on the field. James Conway on the tackle there. Aiden with six carries, Larkin with three. Larkin's with three. Poffenbarger under pressure, wrapped up there. Burkell can't get him. Poffenbarger eludes, gets out over the 25. Almost gets back to the original line of scrimmage. He'll lose about one. And Sam Burkell came bursting up the middle and... Couldn't quite wrap him up. How in the world does Reese Poffenbarger not get sacked or tackled for a loss on this play? Just a quick little miss. I mean, obviously eludes right off the front Sam Burkle, who's got him virtually wrapped up and somehow only loses just one yard. It's what he did all year last year, limit the turnovers and not take sacks and either get the ball away or somehow get back to the line of scrimmage or beyond. Impressive. I look at Poffenbarger. <laughs> and I'm seeing the black uniform, the white number, the yellow trim, and I just keep seeing Ben Roethlisberger out there. <laughs> Slings it outside. Yeah. He's got Parker on the completion out over the 15. Nice move by Parker to slide inside, pick up some additional yardage as he gets down to the 11, although no, they'll mark him down at the 14-yard line, 13-yard line. And Poffenberger doing something again that he did a lot last year, looking and reading the opposing defense with about three or so yards of separation so why not go attack that? He's done it with multiple different receivers, and he hits Jackson Parker there again on the far sideline. See if they can convert here in the red zone, where again, Rich, they were about 86% on the season last year with red zone offensive conversion and efficiency. Four for four against Fordham last year in that game. Outside connection there made at the nine-yard line. Stiff arm attempt by Julian Hicks was no bueno for him. As Andrew Osman, the freshman, stepped in there and made the tackle. And Poffenbarger going to all his guys from last year, Alexander, Parker, and Hicks, and even the new guys, Dietz and, and Wentz from, from ODU. He's very good at spacing the ball around. Danes get their personnel into position. Single back will be Aiden. Aiden. 
Poffenbarger to the corner, going up high. One-handed grab almost, but a flag flies. Julian Hicks almost made a great one-handed catch, but under a little bit of pressure there from Neil Perkins. And the flag flew and is laying in the back of the end zone. Split second, it looked like Hicks was going to be able to come down with that one-hand arm, bring it into the chest and secure it. Almost have to assume it's pass interference here. Let's see what the, the call is. Referees will get together. There is no foul for defensive pass interference. Third down. Perkins wow. is like a cat. I was He's used right. up two of his yeah. nine lives and now. You're seeing the great dance kind of go after Perkins in one-on-one -on -one situations here, right? He was the uh, the recipient on the, the touchdown reception by Roy Alexander. There's been a couple no calls, right? And a lot of times with officials, you see a little bit of a pause. It's almost like, wait a minute, you think that flag's going to get picked up. Might have, been a, might have been out of bounds. Again, like the same situation on there or right. that we had over here that it may have been an uncatchable ball on the near sideline where there was a clear grab in, uh, in the near right. end zone, I should say. There was a clear grab and just no call. So third and five here. Again, the low snap picked up by Poffenbarger. Lays it outside and into the end zone for the freshman, Griffin Woodell. He's got the touchdown, and the Great Danes lead 13-6. Seems like the crowd got a little uh, louder than usual on this one, Rich. Obviously, Woodell, a great story. Awesome stuff to see him receive that scholarship. That's a well-designed play. Have everybody shift off to the left. Waddell's got a free path on the check down on the right side of the end zone. And the, uh, the Great Danes have a chance pending Opalco's extra point. Extend this lead eight. 27 touchdowns in his high school senior year at Glens Falls High School for Pat Lilock and the team up there. And now he's picking right up where he left off here with the Great Danes. Getting that first touchdown of his career. Extra point is up. And it is good. 131 to go. You Albany on top. 14-6 on the Griffin Woodell touchdown. We're back after this. Timeout. With one minute 31 seconds remaining in the first half, your score, U Albany 14. Fordham's. You fired up the grill for one hot dog? Seriously? Hot dogs. Better with Pepsi. Who do you want by your side when you're about to do something amazing? It's not about how much you have or who you know. This is a matter of trust. Because one can do it alone, but two can do it even better. CephQ and Capcom are now Broadview, giving you the power and service you deserve from your financial partner. When you want to know who's by your side, open your eyes and take a look around. That's where we'll be. Welcome to Broadview. At the University at Albany, we see greatness in you. There's passion and purpose, a fierce curiosity, ready to blaze big ideas and tackle the tough questions. We see grit, drive, determination. The University at Albany is home for dreamers and achievers just like you. The world needs greatness, and you are one of the greats. Burgers, better with Pepsi. <laughs> and UAlbany football is sponsored by Town Square Media, 104.5, the team ESPN Radio, which is the capital region's home for New York sports, including New York Yankees baseball, Buffalo Bills football, and UAlbany Great Danes athletics. Tune in every weekday to hear Big Board Sports with Roger Wall and Drive with Charlie and Dan from 3 until 7 p.m. Always an enjoyable day. Get to listen to you and Roger in the morning. And Thank you, Rich. Dan and Charlie. Old partner, Charlie Fulker. That's right. Seen more than his share of UAlbany football games, yes, I'll tell has. you that. Yes, he has. Yeah, we try to do our best at uh, 104.5, the team, to entertain the Capital Region. Well done. Hogan with the kickoff. Run back outside. Nice pick up there. Mason Hatfield doing the job on that far side. Pushed out of bounds by Larry Walker, Jr. Big series here for, for Fordham, for both sides, really. New Albany hold them to just six points in the first half, or can Fordham go down, and whether it's a touchdown or a Heskett field goal, 
try to uh, narrow the gap with Fordham also receiving the ball to start the second half. 28 yard line is where we start. CJ Montez with the controls, looks outside, connects with the man there at the 35 yard line. He carries out over the 40 to the 41. Tackle by Ori Jones Charles. John Charles. Gain of 10 there, first down yardage. Montez this time, he'll take it right up the middle. Oof. And he's met right in the chops by guess who? Anton Junkaj. Nice play by Junkaj. You know, coming right through the middle there. Another returner on that really good front four last year for the Great Danes. Elijah Hill's making some play as well, pushing this offensive line back. And right now, slight edge, that war of uh, attrition, right? Battle of the line of scrimmage, Rich, right now going to the Great Danes. A timeout on the field. 1.10 to go, so a quick timeout called there by Joe Conlon. Check that. You timeout yeah. called by Greg Gattuso. He wants to see if he can preserve some time here and maybe Smart. get another shot at the end zone. Yeah. Good timeout. You get a big play by Junkaj, and now you got a second and long. It's like you said, Rich, just the one to go. Fordham and Joe Conlon still with all three. So, as we know in college, with the time stoppage after the first down, that's plenty of time. Second 12 now. Montez straight back. Looks back, door sack there by Junkaj, falls loose. Still loose. The whistle's already give that sounded, ball to... and I think it's you, Albany Ball. It is. I believe it was Junkaj again. Is that Elijah Hills that oh. might have recovered it? Hills with the recovery, Junkaj with the hit. Tell you what, this you, Albany defense, Ben the aggressor, Junkaj, perfect strip sack, knocks the ball out with his right arm for Montez. And then Elijah Hills, number 93, who lines up right next to Junk Dodge, gets the play. Great Danes have a minute and one timeout and already deep into Fordham territory to take and expand this lead going into halftime. Four and a half sacks from the senior from Port Jervis. Last year, he's already got two and a forced fumble right there for Anton, and he's down with the guys on the sideline getting high fives all over the place. Right at the 30-yard line. That's where Poffenbarger will put it into play. Clock operator, please set the game clock to one minute, three seconds. 103 on the game clock. Anthony Florio adds three seconds here, so 63 seconds for the Great Danes to try to do something right before halftime and give themselves a huge boost going in to the intermission. Poffenbarger so far, 14 of 23, 123, two touchdowns. Had an efficient first half. Gets outside. Roy Alexander. Roy when Alexander. Is he, when has he not uh, utilized this game, huh? I mean, right there, a little, little sweep around. Quick dump out on the near sideline. Been great in the return game. And sometimes you'll see him in the backfield receive a carry or two as well. D. Rice Williams. There on the defense for the Rams. But a first down for the Great Danes, less than a minute to go. Ball's on the 18. Poffenbarger. Great play there by the Great Danes. And he's out of bounds. Brevin Easton, oh. as they fake the outside to the flats, Easton snuck around yeah. behind, and it was wide open, but the pass was just a skosh too long. Exactly right, Rich, and it's a pretty play when that is executed to perfection. It looked like it was. It's a well-thrown ball as we take another look, and you look at Easton, right? The bait to Roy Alexander. He seeps in behind. Trying to see if he got a foot down. It doesn't look like it. I think he might have caught a bit of white there. Coach Katsuso talked to the officials. Will we see a challenge flag here? Discussion going on between Coach Catuso and Jason Farnsworth, the head linesman. And it looks like it will go to review. The ruling on the field is an incomplete pass. The previous play is on the further review. Mm. Now, this is a rule I don't know in college. Inside two minutes in the NFL, everything is a booth review. 
I'm, I'm putting you on the spot here. I didn't ask you this before. Do you know the rule in college? Because I'm not sure if it's a booth review or if the, you can call for I a coach's review. I honestly 100% don't know as well, Rich, because we saw Gattuso. I didn't see a, a challenge flag thrown. He was talking to the official, so maybe it's the same as NFL. It's such a close play and such a tough angle there for sideline, too, to see if he gets that foot down. Take another look here. It's got to be the like the the pinky toe. I mean, on we're the right going foot. very close. Get the whatever measuring tool you need to try to see if he if if Easton gets his foot down. This is a big one here for the Great Danes. You can expand this game to 20 or 21 to six. And again, in in college, just the one foot. Unlike the pros, just get the one foot down, not two. Looking at that left foot of Easton, see if he got that down. One more look at that same angle. Such a well-designed play, though, like you said. Fordham totally fooled. This is a well-thrown ball. Trying to look at that shadow, and it just looks like the foot's out of bounds from here. I don't, I don't think it's there's not enough by much, there right. to be able to overturn is it. Is it enough to overturn? Yep. Exactly right. If it's a touchdown, it stays a touchdown, but it was called incomplete, yeah. so I think it has to stay incomplete. Most likely, yeah, because it's... Might have our decision. Anthony Florio's got the call. After review, the ruling on the field stands. It's an incomplete pass. Second down on the 18-yard line. Nothing they could do there. There's yeah. just not enough video evidence to overturn that. <laughs> Looking at the shadow over there in the corner to try to figure it out, it's just not, not that's not going to be enough to, to overturn a call that was made. Not enough. Booze raining down, as expected. We're with the, the home crowd at Casey Stadium. Great crowd, a beautiful night for football, like we've been saying, Rich. But second down here for the Great Dance. Ball's on the 18, 51 seconds to go. Poffenbarger this time goes outside. Has Roy Alexander. Cuts back inside as Alexander over the 10, down inside the 5. Alexander to the end zone for the touchdown. What a run by Roy Alexander to get the job done and put the Great Danes up by 14. That might be the longest and hardest hard-earned 18 yards I have seen. And Roy Alexander with his second touchdown of the night. I mean, he goes about 21 yards. Excuse me, Rich. He breaks away initially, keeps going, keeps going. Great push from Renninger and some of the guys in company and the stretch at the end. What a play. Roy Alexander using every bit of his six foot two frame to stretch out of the goal line, but before that, breaking at least three tackles inside. He does extend. Didn't look like his knees were down. Touchdown. Waiting for the confirmation of the touchdown. Yep. And they'll take a closer look at this. The previous play is under further review. So they'll review this one as well. So indeed, it is a booth replay booth situation replay. under two minutes. I was going to say, I didn't see, looking for the red flag to be thrown. We didn't see it before. But uh, yeah, either way, he's either down right about at the one yard line or he's in. It's going to be first and goal at the Correct. one or 20 to six. Yeah. And from a selfish highlight standpoint, I'd like this one to stand. That was a really nice run. Yes, it was. Yeah, and if it does stand, that's six catches, 58 yards, two touchdowns for Alexander in the first half. And Alexander was the leading receiver against Fordham last year, too. Six catches for 127. Exactly. Yeah. Right. Gave them some, some problems. I think it's just because of his elusiveness. Right there, I don't think his, his knee or his lower half goes down. The, only, the ball the crosses. Only, the only, sorry, the only other thing they could be looking at is back at the five, he kind of rolled over the pile. But when you roll over the pile, we know, as we've seen several times, you're not down. You're not down. Your body does not touch the ground, and that's a good point by you, Rich, too. That might be what they're looking at, because from these these replays here and these angles we've looked at, it doesn't look like there's enough to really overturn this one. This one probably, I would think, would stand as a touchdown. Spending a little extra time under the hood. Yep. Big calls like this. Want to make sure you get it right. You want to make sure you get it right. Absolutely. After review, the are on the field stands. Touchdown. Said the same thing last time he got booed. That's right. This time he gets cheered. I'd understand that. It's right? tough being a referee. I know. It really is, right? You can't please everyone if you're an official. So an 18-yard touchdown pass from Poffenbarger to Alexander. The second connection 
for that pair today. 20 to six with a point after pending for John Apalco. I'll tell you something about John Apalco in just a second. I don't want to say it yet. It's a good tease. 37 of 37 on PATs last year, three oh. of three this year. So That's a veteran move by you, Rich. Not saying it. The announcer, whether it's Joe Buck or Jim Nance, any of these guys, NFL on any level, the worst thing he can do is when a kicker's going up to attempt an extra point is say, well, he hasn't missed since May of 2017, and then a, it'll be a shank to the right. But Opalco, three for three so far tonight. I think we did that in a basketball game where Jimmer Fredette was at the line to shoot a free oh. throw. Never misses a free throw. Yeah. Jimmer's one of the best free throws in section two. Clank. <laughs> right. Back rim, not exactly. even close. Exactly. Yeah. So Greg Gattuso and this U Albany team very pleased with this first half, the offensive output. And I heard Greg talking, I think it was with you guys on the radio, you know, 48 45, don't want to see another one of those games. And Gattuso's like, I'm fine with the 45. I'll yeah. take the 45 yeah. points. We just don't want to see 48 on the other side. Yeah. Yeah. He's got to be pleased with how it's turned out so far. There's no secret that this offense could score with the best of them in the CAA conference last year. You cleaned some things up defensively, like he said, and you talked to us at practice, Rich, some personnel changes, whatever it may be. For this first half at about 30 minutes of play, it's working so far. Matty Jones will have Coach Catuso at halftime. Little pooch kick there, fair catch called for, live ball. Now, even though one player called for the fair catch and another player call, caught it, Larkins called for the fair catch, and it was Hackett that picked up the ball. The fair catch still holds, so it'll be Fordham ball at about the 22-yard line with 41 seconds to go. 41 seconds and three timeouts, which translates to a lot of time in college football. See what Joe Conlon and his team drew up as we got a player down for, for Fordham. Mark Preto on the sidelines. He was actually the one that made the catch. He did take a pretty solid hit when he caught that ball. Pretty good pooch kick as well. Put into the no man's land for the special teams group for Fordham. Joe Conlon will take the long walk across to make sure his player is okay. Preto, a sophomore linebacker out of Montclair, New Jersey. Made a big impact on special teams and on defense last year for this Fordham team. Good get for the Rams, too, coming out of high school. He was top 10 ranked linebackers in the state of New Jersey. So, Yeah, we've called his name quite a bit so Several far. Several times, right, right. Involved in some, some tackles and some good defensive plays for Fordham. So you saw Conway go down one of the first series of the game. He got up okay, but I sure hope it's nothing serious. It's Coach Catuso walking over, making sure he's okay as well. Like they're looking at the left leg, it looks like. See if we can get a look at what happened. Yeah, it looks like Larry Larry Walker's knee. Hangs into his knee. Yeah. It was right away that now Preto's up, walking mostly now all under his own power. So that's a good sign for the sophomore linebacker. Training staff from Fordham making sure he's okay. 41 seconds to go here. Ball will be at the 22-yard line for Fordham. Really good defensive stand for you, Albany, last time, especially with Junkaj getting through for two sacks and the forced fumble. That sets up the touchdown to Alexander. Yeah, Junkaj couldn't have had a uh, better sequence of plays. The sack to bring him back, and then the strip sack fumble recovered by his partner there up front and Elijah Hills. Joseph Greeny returning as well, and A.J. Simon, we know, very versatile on the end spot. Three wide receivers wide to the right. Felton and Wright are split the farthest. Push pass there is connected to Luffridge. He's out to the 27, 28 yard line. Timeout called by, Cole, by Fordham. One thing the Great Danes have done is they've been able to put some pressure on and get in the backfield to make C.J. Montez uncomfortable early on in this first half. That's a nice adjustment, though. Good football IQ play, a little push pass, knowing that Luffridge is right in front of him to gain a few yards and call the timeout. Ori Jean Charles and Joseph Graney there on the tackle. 
Fordham with two timeouts remaining. U Albany with one. 34 seconds to go here. Broadview halftime show coming up. We'll take you around the University of Albany and show you some of the cool things happening here on the Albany New York campus. We'll also check in with our marching Great Danes. And of course, we'll have stats and highlights. And we'll hear from Coach Greg Atuso right at the halftime break to see what the coach feels about this first half of action for the first game of the year for his Great Danes. Montez straight drop back, pressure from the outside, spins around, gets knocked down. A.J. Simon Oof. does it again. Heavy pressure from that right side by Simon. When Montez went to step out of it, he just fell down. Yeah, and it's one of the more unique sacks you're going to see, Rich, too, because it's almost like Simon's feet were, the, were what uh, sacked and tackled Montez as we take another look quick. I mean, it gets right around. Yeah, and take it down right there. Third sack of the game. And that clock goes to zeros. And that'll be halftime for the UAlbany Great Danes. An outstanding first half of action for UAlbany as they open up a 21-6 lead. Matty Jones lines up. Coach Greg Gattuso must be happy with his first half when you see your offense play as well as they did. Think about all the scoring that was done in the first half last year yeah. by both of these teams. And then you see a, a close 7-6 game, and all of a sudden, you Albany opens it up and goes from there. Exactly right. Yeah, and last year we see 41 points. This one, 27 and 21 of those points lopsided the direction of Albany, And you would anticipate, as, as Matty Jones tracking down Greg Catuso right now, Rich, that he's rather pleased with the first half performance of his team on both sides. You talk about a complimentary football in the first half. 40 offensive plays is pretty nice as well. Let's go down to Maddie. She's got coach Greg Gattuso on the sidelines. Maddie. Coach, a really impressive first half. The offensive display is amazing, led by Pothenbaga, eluding defenders left and right. What are you seeing out there? What's impressing you most with your guys? You know, I just want us to keep playing smart. And I think that we've been smart. We haven't turned the ball over. We're maintaining possession. That's all good things. And you know, the defense had a little bit of an issue, a couple, one series, but after that, they've been really good. So it's just more of the same in the second half, but better. Yeah, the defensive unit are making some great stops, which maybe we may have struggled with last season. What adjustments are you going to make going into the second half to make sure you can close out this game? We just can't give up. We had a couple mental errors that gave up big plays. We have to eliminate those on defense to play better. And I think offensively, I'd like to see us run the ball a little better. But um, I think right now, 21 points we're happy with. We'd like to do that again the second half. I think we can get a win. Awesome. Thank you, Coach. Good luck. Back to you, Rich. Matty, Coach, thanks very much. 43 rushing yards so far for the UAlbany Great Danes, but 153 through the air, and that's where you make your mark when you have Reese Poffenberger as your quarterback. Exactly right. Three touchdowns as well through the air from Reese Poffenberger. 21-6, our score at halftime. The Broadview Halftime Show continues after this timeout. You're watching UAlbany football on Flow Sports. by your side when you're about to do something amazing. It's not about how much you have or who you know. This is a matter of trust because one can do it alone, but two can do it even better. CephQ and Capcom are now Broadview, giving you the power and service you deserve from your financial partner. When you wanna know who's by your side, open your eyes and take a look around. That's where we'll be. Welcome to Broadview. You get yourself to class. You show up for meetings, at home and at work. Your flex is making time for yourself and your community, no matter what. Soon, CDTA will introduce its biggest flex yet, with added mobility options that let you bike, scoot, and share. Wherever you go, however you choose to get there, you can count on CDTA. We're here to keep you safe and the region moving forward.
Fireworks over top of Tom and Mary Casey Stadium here on a nice clear night. On the campus at the University of Albany, Albany leading 21-6 right now. We'll check out the marching Great Danes and some more about the activity going around the UAlbany campus. The students are back, the energy's with it, and there's plenty of stuff happening at UAlbany. Let's take a look around the campus at the University of Albany. showcase. There were over 30 disciplines represented by 900 distinct projects, performances, demonstrations, and displays on view here today. It's the UAlbany Showcase Day. It's the day where everyone in the college comes out, shares their new ideas, and presents them. It's really awesome. Being able to come here and show and then have that many people have interest in my dress, it's like an amazing experience. It's a little nerve-wracking, but it's awesome to be able to present all the work that I've done and have people see it. We had a student come over and talk to us about how he makes 3D prints, and that's a form of art. So it's great to talk to people from all over campus about how creativity might influence what they're doing. All around campus, the energy was palpable, the enthusiasm was unparalleled, and the pride, the pride of our students, all showcasing the great work that transpires here at the University at Albany. Student engagement, experiential learning, community engagement. Thanks to all of you, this has happened today. This is what New Albany is all about. I'm Tamia. I am a senior here at New Albany. I am a biology major with psychology, creative writing, and educational studies minor. I'm an undergraduate research assistant, but what I've been working on a lot is PFAS. Its biggest risk is the fact that it keeps accumulating. At some point, it does end up doing damage to your organs, particularly your lungs, and eventually it can cause serious health risks. I've learned that when you're a bio major, classes can be pretty intense, so I wanted to make sure I had like a built-in fun class every semester. That's how I ended up with the creative writing minor. My psychology minor ended up coming out of being a part of Middle Earth and educational studies, if you're part of Middle Earth and you've been a part of it for long enough, you get enough credits to have a minor. Middle Earth is a peer assistance program. I am currently president of the organization, so that is my baby. You want to make sure that you're being well-rounded. And not in the sense of like, hey, this is going to look great on my resume, but more of like, a, I can do this, this is something that I'm comfortable with. And I think that getting all these aspects in kind of helped me to understand what I'm comfortable with and what I'm not. 
As someone who's pre-med, I feel like it's really important to be able to hear your patients and what they're saying and understanding them. And I never want to be in a position where my patients or the people that I'm helping feel as if they're not being heard or understood. Because everyone has a story and you have to be able to listen to that. The best way to be able to help others and the best way to give the best service that you can is to expand your horizons as much as you can. Toba Rasoli and I'm a senior at UAlbany. My name is Gavin McGuire and I'm an anthro major. This is the Pethic site. It's a Native American prehistoric site. We're excavating, trying to find out as much as we can about the occupants here. So this is UAlbany's field school that is exclusive to us. So this definitely gives you experience. You actually can't go to archaeological grad school without doing field work. This site in particular is very unique to UAlbany. The amount of experience that we get and how active of a site this is, is unique. I like to dig. I like to get really dirty, so I'm always in there digging. You have to screen. There's really no time to sit around. Actually being able to put skills into practice, doing practical archaeological work, is really, really helpful and useful. It's very different, like, reading something in a book and then, like, holding it in your hand because when you hold it, you can, especially like a biface tool, you can feel exactly where they chipped it off, exactly where they sharpened it, and you realize what you're holding, that somebody maybe 10,000 years ago made this, held it, that family. It's, it's more than an artifact, it's like something that was part of somebody else's life. Doing something physically rewarding and finding artifacts, you almost feel as though you're present in history. Now I'm just sitting here like remembering my six-year-old self wanting to be an archaeologist and here I am in field school. So I feel like you should just always take the opportunities as they come and see where it takes you. Back here at Tom and Mary Casey Stadium where we're getting set to hear the marching Great Danes under the direction of Justin Miller. Had the pleasure to hear them practicing the other night during a, right up before a women's soccer game. Ready to put on a great show here so we'll take a listen in at the Marching Great Danes under the direction of Justin Miller. The Marching Great Danes with the drum major, Joy Johnson, under the direction of Justin Miller, the halftime show here at Tom and Mary Casey Stadium. We've got more in the Broadview halftime show coming up for you as we wind our way towards the third quarter of action. 
on Bob Ford Field. 21-6, UAlbany on top. We're back after this on Flow Sports. Push your head. Back here at Tom and Mary Casey Stadium as the marching Great Danes continue their halftime show. We'll take a look at halftime statistics in this one as the UAlbany Great Danes are on top of the Fordham Rams by a 21-6 score. Greg Atuso talked about it at halftime, Michael, that the running game is not necessarily where they want it to be, but the passing statistics have not only been there, they've been efficient. Yes, they have, yeah, and when you've got 153 yards through the air, three touchdowns if you're Reese Buffenbarger, uh, that's a great start, and, and then taking a look right there, you know, rushing, like you said, Rich, 43, the 153 through the air, first downs doubling Fordham, also time of possession and penalty are, I mean, time of possession's been huge from the long, lengthy drives, kind of wearing out that Fordham Ram defense towards the end of the second half. You made that point early on that it seemed like you Albany had the ball a lot. How much does that not only help the offense, but how much does that help the defense, which is still, you know, last year not super defense. This year we're seeing good things out of them, but you don't want to burn them out all in the first game. Exactly right. And when you've got, you know, eight, ten-minute drives on offense or anything along those lines, it's going to help out this unit that only allowed six points in the first half. It looks quite a bit better than they did to start the season last year. And you're seeing in key places where it's a little bit of a bend or a little flex, don't break type defense where, you know, they've had a couple of big plays happen, but really when the time has come when they've needed to step up, Jump Kosh has had a sack or Simon's been through for a sack or something like that. Yeah, exactly. And also going two for two and forcing two field goals in the red zone too and not allowing it to get into the back of the end zone. Some good pass protection, good coverage. Deshaun Winston making some good plays, the transfer, and Anton Jump had two big plays, probably the defensive hero of the first half. And that's a great point. Fordham five for five in the red zone against you Albany last year, but four of those were touchdowns. Yeah. So here you're you're holding the field goals and you're enabling yourself to open up a bit of an advantage. Yeah, you'll take three instead of six if you're Greg Gattuso, not only once but twice, and some good momentum there with the late score heading into halftime. Got to feel like, like defensive coordinator Bill Nessel feels really good about what yeah. that defense is doing. So highlights coming up from our first half, 21-6, Great Danes on top.
grill for one hot dog? Seriously? Hot dogs. Better with Pepsi. <sighs> you get yourself to class. You show up for meetings at home and at work. Your flex is making time for yourself and your community, no matter what. Soon, CDTA will introduce its biggest flex yet with added mobility options that let you bike, scoot, and share. Wherever you go, however you choose to get there, you can count on CDTA. We're here to keep you safe and the region moving forward. At the University at Albany, we see greatness in you. There's passion and purpose, a fierce curiosity, ready to blaze big ideas and tackle the tough questions. We see grit, drive, determination. The University at Albany is home for dreamers and achievers just like you. The world needs greatness, and you are one of the greats. For 75 seasons, CAA football has been built on hard work, determination, and the desire for greatness. For 75 seasons, outstanding players, legendary coaches, historic rivalries, and championship teams have made CAA football great. After 75 seasons, the best is yet to come. CAA football, defining excellence. Another rock and roll weekend. Burgers, better with Pepsi. <sighs> Back here at Bob Ford Field at Tom and Mary Casey Stadium. Speaking of Bob Ford, great to see him in the elevator on the way up. The oh, coach. That was great. Got to be happy with what he's seeing from his U Albany Great Danes here. 21 6 lead in this season opener against Fordham. Rich Becker, Michael Johnson Jr., Matty Jones down on our sidelines. And Michael, a really impressive offensive showing in the first half. And I think we knew that from U Albany that that was possible. But to see it in the first game has got to really make U Albany fans and the coaching staff really happy with what's going on. Absolutely. And you saw a lot of similarities and consistencies, Rich, from you know, what the offense did under Jared Ambrose and Reese Puffenbarger in year one, getting the ball out quick, you know, utilizing a lot of different receivers and spreading the ball out. And you saw that in 21 points, therefore, to show for it. Take a look at the highlights in this one. Albany on the board early. Yeah, nice fade touchdown route to Roy Alexander. He was featured in special teams. Nice one-on-one -on -one coverage. He's able to bring it in and give the Great Dane 7 up the lead. They hold on defense, which has been a key, and just get the field goal. Exactly right. You'll take three instead of six if you're Greg Atuso. And C.J. Montez here dropping back. This is one of the big plays, hitting Jaden Allen, tight end number 88. But again, the Great Danes stop it down to 13, force another field goal. Yeah, hold that field goal. Two for two now. Two field goals last year. And two field goals this year. Exactly six right. points there. And the special teams been the key, right, so far in this first half here, Rich. And whether it's Jackson Parker or Roy Alexander at Jackson Parker here making multiple guys miss and getting the great team some easier field position, not having to go as far to reach the end zone. And you talked about Alexander really being everywhere. He makes a great catch here in the middle. Exactly does. Yeah, and he, it's either whether it's an end around, whether it's a simple route over the middle as a slot, he's used in a lot of different ways. Nice misdirection here by Jared Ambrose as he goes to the freshman. Yeah, exactly. Get the scholarship Griffin from Hudson Falls being able to reach the end zone. The crowd might have been a little extra loud on that one. You can understand why seeing him get the touchdown. And then Alexander with just a tremendous individual effort. Yeah, probably the best offensive moment of the first half, to say the least, to make all those guys missed the extra effort pretty long and lengthy 21 yards and makes it 21 points for the great dance targeted nine times six catches for 58 yards two touchdowns for Roy Alexander really the story of the first half yeah absolutely he was the story for the offense last year in that 93 point game and we did see 41 points in the first half last year didn't get that this time but uh, 27 and 21 in favor of those great dance you all been very happy to have the larger number on their side but remember and I don't like to be the wet blanket here you already had a big lead going to the fourth last year they've got to close this out in this second half. Yes, they do. Exactly right. And that's what Coach just was talking with our Matty Jones right before halftime, right? Want to keep the no turnovers, play some smart complimentary football, and the Great Tens would hopefully wind up with a win. But the Rams and Joe Conlon got to be making the adjustments, try to come out with the ball to start the second half. Second half action coming up on Flow Sports from Tom and Mary Casey Stadium in Albany, New York.
Both teams back on the field getting set for second half action here. Fordham won the toss initially, but elected to defer. So they will receive here in the second half and be first on offense as they try to dig themselves out of a 21-6 hole. Michael, your keys for the second half for both these sides. Rich, I think it's I'm going to piggyback off of what I had for keys to the game uh, before the game started. Run the football more if you're Fordham. It was working for quite a, quite some time, be able to run the football. And then also, you know, for the Great Danes, continue putting pressure on in the backfield. That was translating to a lot of success and also made C.J. Montez a little uncomfortable back there. Sam Hogan set to kick off here to get things going in the second half. K.J. Reed breaks a tackle there again, then gets a face full of Larry Walker on the sideline, gets tossed out of bounds at the 25-yard line, and that's where C.J. Montez, a little extracurricular activity down there, where C.J. Montez will put this offense into action. Montez, 6 of 9 for 76 yards, was sacked three times in the first half by the Great Danes. Great Danes had the ability to, whether it was through the middle or, or on the edges of the sidelines, Rich, they were able to create a lot of pressure, led by number four, Anton Junkaj, making a, quite a few plays, especially back-to-back, -back. shifted a little momentum in this game. Montez, a California kid, and he actually had MJ Wright and some other guys out to camp out in California during the offseason to really get to know each other, and you know, they're hoping that, Fordham's hoping that that chemistry pays off throughout the year for them. Luffridge on the carry. Out over the 30, gain of five. Maybe make it six, be second down and four. That right there is where Fordham had success in the first half. Run of the ball just straight up a gut, right? Old school, and that's where they're able to get some positive yardage and really maintain everything and keep their drives going. Brian Abraham, Ori Jean Charles on the tackle. Second and four. Keeper this time by Montez, but nothing doing, says Ori Jean Charles. Breaking through the line. Got some help there from Brian Abraham and Larry Walker. And A.J. Simon had both options were covered there. Simon went right after right after Luffridge in the Montez of keep. Simon statistically not other than the sack. Not showing up great in the stats right now, but really showing up on the field. If you watch the film, you're going to see A.J. Simon all over the place. That's a great point, Rich, too. Not on the stat sheet, but he's making the plays and disrupting quite a bit in the backfield. Straight back, long pass down the sideline. And there's a flag as... Yeah. Bill Hackett big, in coverage. Yep. Had a big hold of MJ Wright's jersey there about the 40-yard line, right where the flag and the cap stand. Pass interference. Defense number five. 15-yard penalty. First down. So Bill Hackett, who got hurt in the Fordham game last year and missed significant time, gets called for the hold here. Or pass interference is actually the call, but he grabbed a hold of the jersey, and you can see it right there. You know, like NFL, where that would have been spot foul, you're looking at a bigger you know, chunk change, only 15 yards no matter what. But Hackett, yeah, on that one. I like that play call and decision by Joe Collin in this Fordham offense, right? Try to throw a deep ball one-on-one, -on -one, see what happens. Either get a call or put it where it's a spot where your receiver can make the play. Hackett only 5'7", right 6 foot, so you got a little size there, so throw it up and, and, and make your guy go get it. It was rather obvious, too. He was grabbing for about a yard or two, so official had perfect view, and it was the right call. Stack receivers both sides wide. Ball on the 44. Blitz up the middle by Simon. Luffridge over the 45-yard line out to the 46. Full carry by number 15. Gain of two there for the junior from Houston. Tackle by Dylan Kelly. Really Kelly, our player to watch, really the first time we've called him today. They've done a nice job yeah. neutralizing the outstanding senior out of Amherst. Yeah, spot on, Rich. Kelly's a guy that's, again, 97 tackles last year, was seemingly everywhere making a play when they needed him to. Montez, outside pass. He's got MJ Wright. Tackle immediately by Bill Hackett. First down yardage, though, as they're out to the 41-yard line. Check that. the Yes, the 41-yard line. Another guy, Dylan Kelly, and then MJ Wright was another guy, one of our impact players before the game. That's only his second reception, only one reception the first half. Rather quiet testament to the Great Danes and their coverage in the secondary. Gain of 14 on that play, first down. Quick outside, right. Hackett stood him up, got some help from behind by Ori Jean Charles. That's complete to number two, MJ Wright. 
Hackett's got to step off. Looked like he lost his helmet. He's going to sit out this play. That's a big collision there at the end. Kevon Angry into that spot where Hackett was. Fakes the handoff. Under pressure, throws there, complete out to the 35 yard line, but a flag flies. Angry on the coverage. That flag came from deep in the secondary. Well thrown ball too, scrambling to his right in Montez and seeing and trusting MJ right in a little out and turn right near the 20. Interested to see what this call is, see if it's a pass interference on you, Albany. Pass interference, defense number 21. Ball be placed in spot of the foul, first down. Abraham gets called for that. You wonder when on a comeback like that, sometimes you can, you can get a push off, but not in this case. Yeah, exactly right. And Basically throwing as getting tackled to the ground, and Abraham wasn't even wasn't even in coverage on that. He was, what, yeah. I think that's what Greg Gattuso is asking. Like my guy wasn't even in coverage no, there. He wasn't. After the penalty, the ball was punted at the 34-yard line. Second, first down and ten, Fordham. So first and ten, ball in the 25. First down and ten, Fordham. Opening drive of this second half. You Albany on top, 21-6. Into a pile of people there. Montez just fired that ball. <laughs> Joseph Greeny, 58 there for the Great Danes. Batting that one down. Just getting that pressure up the middle. Yeah. Kassan Shahadi had it on the play before. This time it's Greeny getting in there. Luffridge next to Montez. Fakes the handoff. Looks to the corner. Nobody there. Miscommunication there. You could see clearly a miscommunication between number 85, Matt Buron, and Montez as Buron turned around and said, hey, it wasn't going there. Yeah, it was going to say there's nobody within about 20 yards of that throw. So usually, like you said, Rich, that'll translate to a little bit of a uh, miscommunication there on the offense. We've seen Montez a few times on those throws. A little bit, a couple times overthrow some receivers towards the end zone or a little bit of some miscommunication. That can happen first game, you know, as being a new quarterback coming in, the transfer from New Mexico. Two receivers both sides. Luffridge next to Montez. He looks on third and ten. Got Thornton inside at the five. He takes it down to the goal line and stretches. Touchdown, Fordham. Nice move by Cole Thornton to spin around and sneak into the end zone. Now, this is, in Thornton, too, this is going to be a little interesting here, Rich, because he might have been out of bounds before he came back in play. There is a hat down at the three-yard line, and we when take you see the referee's hat. Yeah. I believe Thornton was, he had it looked like he had stepped out around the 10-yard line and come back into play. We got a player down, a lineman for Fordham. And Montez is right there with him. Ryan Joyce. The result of the play is a touchdown. Yeah, 65 Ryan Joyce, and I did not hear what referee Anthony Florio said until he said the result of the play is yeah. a touchdown. So they must have taken a look of that, look at that to see if Thornton went out of bounds. Ruling in the field is a Fordham touchdown. So 21-12 is where we stand right now. We'll see if we can get another look at this to see exactly what happened on that near side. Yeah, Thornton makes a nice play, one-on-one -on -one coverage with, with Bill Hackett right there, but what you Albany was arguing was if he stepped out around the 10. So we are going to take a review on this one to see if there was an out-of-bounds situation for Thornton, which, when you, as we said, when you see the hat down, generally that means the player in the play stepped out of bounds at some right. point. The referee throws the hat to denote that, and then the play carries on. Right. Smart move here, big play, trying to take a look at this one right, and if it stands, we'll see what Fordham does. Get another look at the angle here. And with Thornton just kind of coming into the picture, right. you're not really getting a... It's a uh, tough one. Right, it's, yeah. a, it's a tough play. But you can see right there that the field judge, William Moran, with a hat off, signal touchdown. Exactly. Smart move taking a look at this. And Thornton, a guy who had a big special teams return or uh, earlier in the first half for, for Fordham. But it's, it's a nice play if this is going to stand. Whether he's out of bounds or not, it's a good catch one-on-one. -on -one. 
good trust from Montez to, to get it to his guy. Get another look well, here. Turn. He's in if it stands. I mean, that's not right. the, yeah, he, he crosses the Just the to plane. see if that knee went down, but you can see that that left knee is hovering. Yeah. So he's definitely across the line. So it's a touchdown, I, it, and there's not really a conclusive look as to whether he was right. out of bounds or not. Therefore, most likely theme of the night, it would probably stand. No evidence to overturn. Then the question is, does Fordham kick the extra point? You would probably think with 11.45 to go, you don't go for two this early if you're right. Joe Collin and Fordham play it safe. And you know you've got a kicker in Brendan Peskin, the senior out of Melville, New York, who is really good from about uh, probably 45, 48 yards out. Yeah. So, you know, you think if it comes down to that and it's a last-second field goal, you've got some range on your exactly kicker. Exactly right. Let's see if we can get another look here. Oh, yeah. The, it's So you can see he's definitely out of bounds Ultimate. there at the, tw at the 10 yard line. At the review, the ruling on the field is confirmed. Touchdown. He's, he's out for about from the 13 to the 11 yard line, almost to the 10, comes back in. I wonder if it's because with the ball thrown, he's in play. I mean, it's an. This is an interesting one. So let's go to Gene Steratore in yeah, New York. I was say, <laughs> we, Mike Pereira, any of our rules experts, yeah, to, to better understand that. So it's a touchdown nonetheless. Cole Thornton, the senior, getting the score. And now the extra point from Peskin. Whistle. Far side flag. Prior to the snap, full start. Offense number 85. Five yard penalty. We'll attempt to try. So this will move him back five yards. Make it a little bit harder on Peskin, who is a very solid kicker. He is. On the flip side, Coach Catusos spoken very highly of John Opalco for the uh, Great Danes as well. Said he's looked very solid in camp and in practice. So both, both coaches very confident in their kickers. You never know when it's going to come down to the leg of your guy. Special teams can win or lose games. Kick is up, and that one is also good. 11.45 to go here in the third. UAlbany still on top, but Fordham closes it to 21-13. We're back after this timeout. Cole Thornton picking a great time for his first touchdown of his career as he closes the gap. The 21-13 UAlbany still on top here as we've got 11.45 to go in our third period of play. And we did check in with the officials during the break there. And the reasoning, Michael Johnson Jr., that he was not considered out of bounds in that situation. Right, is the contact, right, being able to be forced out. He wasn't running straight down the sideline to be able to head. If, he's, if he runs right back in and be contacted by the defender, therefore Bill Hackett is able to come back in, catch the ball, it stands. Because I know I, everything I kept thinking to is like the out of bounds where the ball's dead or illegal touching because what kept going through my mind. That's a tough one, but right. thanks to our officials to, to make us sound smarter and know the rule now. <laughs> Great to have officials up here in the press box yeah. with us that you can get those answers from. But, yeah, if he, as long as he comes right back in bounds, he's good to go, and that's exactly what the call was there. Yep. 
So 21-13 our score here. U Albany on top of Fordham, 11.45 to go here in the third. A big offensive series for Reese Poffenbarger, who had a really outstanding first half at 16 of 26, 153 and a touchdown. And the offensive line doing a nice job keeping it clean, keeping the pocket clean for Poffenbarger and really not letting him get under too much pressure. No, exactly. And, you know, the luxury to have if you're Albany in this offensive line is if by chance Fordham gets into the backfield, Poffenbarger's mobile enough to a lot of times escape. But giving him a lot of, uh, of you know, practice and, and space and time is where he's going to be able to be dynamic and utilize it as best to use his speed to escape. Peskin to kick it off. Roy Alexander deep, Levi Wentz back there with him. This one will go to Alexander at the two. Special teams have been big for Albany tonight. Alexander looking for another good run back. Gets out to the 20, spins away. He's got some open field over here, but nice angle taken there by the Fordham, by Fordham's number five, Ricky Gonzalez to second, as he comes up to slow Alexander down. Tell you what too, Rich, it was an impressive drive for Fordham. Nine plays, 76 yards and 310. Not being able to use a lot of clock, but able to go up the field in a hurry. And that was, uh, it looked like it, and it felt like on that, Alexander got more yards than he did, but a nice way to change the field, gain a couple more positive yards. So at the 19-yard line for UAlbany, probably their worst field position of the night so far. That's saying something, too. Where they need a big drive here to eat up some clock and put some points on the board. Great Danes leading 21-13. Great crowd we mentioned here tonight. Consider a sellout at 8,500 at Tom and Mary Casey Stadium tonight. The stands, both sides, the berm, packed. And on a beautiful night for football here. A tackle there made by number 42, Jack Lau. And you Albany with a man down as the training staff comes out to attend. Just based on the way that... Deshaun Winston is sitting. It looks like a cramp. Yeah. Which is not good, but it's better than... Ex exactly right, yeah. And if you take a look here, right, though, judged by a sitting face, all Aiden goes up in the middle through the uh, for the carry, and yeah, you hope it's just a cramp. Yeah, not, we're, we're not doctors. It's always tough speculating, right, to, to see, but I, I'm with you there. Yeah. The way he was sitting, you hope it's nothing serious and just trying to work it out. Aiden, rather than Winston, mixing up my zeros again. <laughs> Trust me, my first year last year, I did that plenty of times. Whether it's a five, because that's a number that could be common for receiver or yep. a defensive back, running backs too. Yeah, it, it gets tricky on special teams. Yeah, yeah, and 53-man rosters to begin with too. Just trying to balance the numbers. So as we mentioned, 8,500 to sell out here tonight. Uh, it, it's so, in, and it's it's difficult the schedule for you Albany this year. It when is. You think about, you know, you, you got a great night, and win or lose, you got an exciting game here today, and, and you want to come back next week and see some more. But if you want to see some more, you got to go to Marshall, and then you got to go to Hawaii, yeah. and then you got to go to Morgan State yeah. before we finally get one back here. In about a month to start conference <laughs> play against Villanova. Right. Exactly. So Aiden's up. Still a little slow coming off. The man who compared in some ways the way he runs to Carl Mofor. We're certainly hoping he could be a workhorse like Mofor was. Anytime you're compared to a guy like Carl Mofor, uh, that's, that's high praise. Two backs now. Two receivers to the high side. Poffenbarger straight back. Has time. Throwing long. Has a man right down the middle. Just overthrows Brevin Easton, who was wide open down the middle. He had at least three steps on Nathan Lindsay. Just a little too much mustard on that one from Reese Poffenbarger, Rich. And the deep balls, he was such an accurate quarterback last year. That's something you didn't see him do too much. A little bit of an overthrow. He had time in the pocket, good protection on both sides by Latulip and Ozzie Hutchinson, making it a clear step up in the pocket throw. And he said, that's a touchdown if he gets it to him, no question. Lindsay, one of the freshmen on the second line on the two deep. It's all freshmen on their two deep. Yeah. All graduate students and seniors on the fr on the first team. And but then the freshmen. A lot of confidence in those freshmen, especially Lindsay, who's a guy from Aliquippa down in Pennsylvania. That's a program that plays big games all the time. So he's not phased by the college gamers. Poffenbarger on the run, directing. Now he'll take the run, gets out over to the 25-yard line to the 27. Give him the 28, gain of seven. Be third down and one. Ball by seven, Reese and Poffenbarger again, 
using his mobility to his advantage as he's getting chased by Fordham defense, several guys in there, especially uh, Peter Chaloub lead the charge. So fourth and one here, and you're too deep in your own end to take a chance. So Tyler Pastula in for the third punt. And if you're Fordham, that's a great start. You score on your opening drive in three minutes, and you force a three and out in a one-possession game. Now get the ball back to your offense. Nice punt there. Thornton calls for the fair catch, gets the UAlbany roll as it goes out of bounds around the 36-yard line. So an opportunity there for Fordham to try to take its first lead of the season. Great Danes have led wire to wire so far through the first 40 minutes, just shy of 40 minutes in this game. And if you're Joe Conlon, C.J. Montez, and, and Fordham and company here, try to do more of the same. Scored rather efficiently. Really nice, fluent drive so far. And that cliche saying it's sports rich can be a tale of two halves. Yep. And Fordham trying to seize that momentum and get right back in this game. Montez looking under pressure, gets sacked from behind. John Cash again sneaks through. May have had some help from Dylan Kelly. Oh, yeah. I yeah, figured we were going to call Kelly's name uh, a little bit more at some point in this game. Too talented of a player speaking in with practice. Very excited about this defense and a veteran presence like Kelly in the locker room who was the mainstay. And that's why he's so dynamic. He can bait in coverage and he can be utilized in blitzes right there and gets the sack. Led the team in tackles last year. Third team CAA, all preseason CAA this year. Expecting a lot of things out of him. Montez rips it across the middle to a sliding MJ Wright who makes the catch at the 45-yard line. 13-yard gain. Noticed on Montez's last few dropbacks here, he's looking right to MJ Wright. He looks off right away to the right-hand side, maybe going back to that relationship that they had in training together in California, right? That chemistry and that trust, seeing his eyes look for number two right away. Luffridge stacked up there and tossed back for a loss. Or Eugene Charles was not letting go until the whistle sounded and then maybe held on a little bit longer. I was going to say, I, I, on those, you always want to be careful. It's like, all right, you got the tackle. You don't want to get a flag there late. But uh, nice job of tonight's answer by the Great Danes. Stuffing the run up the middle, which is something they didn't do as efficiently probably as Coach Catuso would have liked in the first half. But that's a good answer to get the ball back. Parker deep to return. From the 45 -yard line. Was indeed a report from the sideline from Matty Jones. Was indeed a cramp for Faisal Aiden. So he will return once UAlbany has the ball back. Whistle sounds before Haslick can get the punt off. And in a fourth and three situation. Prior to the snap, full start. Offense number seven, five yard penalty. Fourth down. You all, but he's fortunate it wasn't on them. It'll now be fourth and eight. Move Hazlitt back just a little bit. Several uh, false starts or encroachments we saw in the first half. Every time Reese Poffenbarger would get five back, it'd be a five back by you all, but you're right, Rich. You get a penalty there. It's first down Fordham. So fortunate it's against the Rams. The punt continues. Hazlitt, a first team Patriot League selection. Rams pick second in the Patriot League behind Holy Cross this year, coming off a 9-3 record last year, 5-1 in the conference. Long, spiraling kick. Parker has it at the 7. Gets a face full right there. So he takes a big hit from the Mike Courtney and gets pushed back to the 10, a flag on the play. And Parker at the end of that, he, he did take a, a hit. You weren't kidding, but the helmet comes off too. Parker will go to the sideline. We'll sort out the penalty. We've seen a lot of Anthony Florio of late. Yes, we have. During the return, personal foul, face mask, kicking team number 27, 15-yard penalty, first down. So Courtney gets called for the face mask. That'll add some yardage for you, Albany, in the positive direction as far as the Great Danes are concerned. What would have been their worst field position of the night. Now up to the 25-yard uh, line. You can see it just on the right-hand side of yep. the mask as Courtney was taking them down. He got his fingers inside the hook. And when you see the helmet off, a lot of times the indications point to a, a face mask as the penalty if a flag is thrown. Single set back behind Poffenbarger. Fakes it. Right over the middle, wide open. 
Renninger with a catch. The Hill Perkins on the coverage. Great play action here, right? A great ability to sell it, and Renninger kind of posing as a blocker, and then goes right over the middle, wide open. Nobody near him. Good job by Reese Poffenbarger to sell the run. Was very dangerous last year on play action with his speed and with his accuracy. We got a referee now with a crampy calf. Trainer will come out, see if they can get that taken care of. Early season for the officials, too. Yeah, it's, they're running up and down the field just like the players are, so it happens. Right. Yeah, you focus on the players in the game and all the cameras point to them, but these officials, too, have to keep up with these guys. If a, a calf tenses up or you don't know what it is, they're at just as much of a risk as the players. The leg cramps. The training staff surrounds the officials, make sure their partner's okay. Take a look at our CDTA rusher of the game. And right now, Anton Junkaj has really been impressive with what he's been doing up front. And not only statistically impressive, but also impressive in just making things happen for other players on his line. Exactly right. Three tackles, two sacks, right? One of them a strip sack, being able to, uh, to be able to knock that ball out with, with C.J. Montez to get the ball back. So Junkaj has been a big impact player on defense, and he got that momentum going for the Great Danes to be able to score on offense their last drive of the first half. Big series here for U Albany as they look to respond to what Fordham did in marching down the field. Very efficient in three minutes, nine plays. Yeah. You see that just kind of marching right down the field against your defense. That not only puts the points on the board, but yep. it gives you a lot of that momentum as you continue through the third quarter. Exactly right. In three minutes, but credit to the Great Danes defense, too, to get the ball back, right? You have to go right back out of the field after U Albany basically three and out. Mm -hmm. And now, if you're the Great Danes offense, you got a little bit of position here after the big completion to. Renninger over the middle. High expectations for Renninger being a lead tight end and a loaded wide receiver tight end room. I mean, the Great Danes bring a lot of guys back, and they're deep on offense. Puffenbarger's got a ton of weapons to be able to spread the ball out to. Renninger talked about it. He doesn't want to be Thomas Graney. I'm sure he'd like to be as good as Thomas yeah, right. Graney, but he has to be himself and play right. the game that he plays. He's a good blocker. He's got very good hands, and he's got a high IQ. Those three things will take you a long way. Yes, they will. Yeah, and he's, and you're right, the uniqueness of, of being yourself. Every tight end is different, how you block, how you run your routes, how you're built, and, and Renager can, can be a nice replacement here for uh, for Thomas Greeny this season. And he's a versatile guy. I mean, he played, is. you know, baseball, played basketball, played uh, football and volleyball he's in a good high school. Athlete. So, yeah, he's a good all-around athlete. Poffenbarger, a little change of directions as he goes to Larkins, who slides through, still going as he spins out over the 35-yard line down to the 34 First down, U Albany. Looked like for a second there, Larkins was going to be able to, to sneak through everybody. Uh, tripped up there at the end near the 30 yard line, but Great Danes moving the ball again. It's been an efficient night on offense for him. See if they can keep it going. Fourth carry for Larkins on the night. He'll set up right behind Poffenbarger as they'll have some quick words. Alexander in the slot. They put Renninger in motion. Now switches, switches sides. Wentz to the near side. Split. Larkins. Wow, got whacked inside there by Claudie Robinson. Just came up and just filled that gap where Larkins was going. Yeah, nobody touched him either, right? Robinson just untouched, goes right into the backfield. Bit physical. Nose guard for, for Fordham is Robinson, and he's he's made a couple tackles here for losses so far in this game. And, and you're seeing it with, obviously, Aiden courtesy of our, our, our sideline reporter, Matty Jones, with the cramp. Now Larkins, the transfer, Bentley getting some carries here on this drive. Second down. Pressure coming from the outside. Poffenbarger steps up. Now he rolls right, throws right, hits the receiver, Wentz, goes out of bounds. Tackle made there or pushed out of bounds by Mike Courtney. And another injury as a Fordham player slow getting up. Number 94. Jason Walker. Poffenbarger again sees the rush, steps up very good, especially when he runs to his right and hits Dietz, his, his old ODU teammate, now new U Albany teammate. Dietz with his fifth, uh, fifth reception of the night, one, one behind Roy Alexander for the U Albany leading receivers tonight. Five catches last year for Dietz in 10 games, so. 
Handoff, breaking through. Second, breaks a tackle. Larkins out over the 30, 25 yard line. May have, yes, first down yardage as they'll move the chains. Tackle there by Stephen Williams, the second. Good looking drive here so far for, for Nate Larkins. Been able to find some space and utilize some of the holes. Good blocking up front. Scott Hausman with a nice block there. Rich up the middle, kind of clearing the seam for, for Larkins to get a few extra yards there. From the 29 yard, from the 24 yard line. First and 10 here for Albany Larkins directly behind Poffenbarger. One receiver either side. Fake. Rolls the other way. Looking to try to set up a screen. Poffenbarger just throws away, but he's got a man wide open. Kneeled down at the <laughs> two-yard line was Carter Moses. I thought that Poffenbarger was just going to try to throw that away and that all of a sudden yep. Moses is just standing there by himself <laughs> so did like I. he parted and, the Red Sea. And we're, we're following the ball just like everybody is. And all of a sudden there's a wide open receiver, lo and behold, at the three-yard line. That's a great play by Reese Poffenbarger. In distress, in discomfort with three guys coming towards him. He gets rid of it and just a great play. Another look again. Another play action. About a lot of white jerseys right in your face. Being able to get rid of that. Just a great play by the uh, by the Great Danes. And Carter Moses, like you said, Rich, with a nice catch. He's got a touchdown if he doesn't uh, you know, take a knee there. But safe play to catch it. 6'5", 233 guys don't usually get lost, but he was wide open. <laughs> Larkins to the two. Pushes forward to the one. Tackle made by a host of Fordham players. James Conway leading the pack. I was going to say, that would have been pretty nice for Larkins to get a touchdown, cap off this drive. He's been the main, main focal point here. He's earned some tough yardage, now the leading rusher for the Great Dance tonight. Larkins with 30 yards on six carries at this point. Second goal from the one. Eye formation, Poffenbarger tight. Puts Wentz in motion. Carry there, Larkins, stuffed by Burkell. Check that, 98 Colby Spencer, not 99 Burkell. Yeah, well read there by the, uh, the the Rams defense, and looks like they see it coming, right? Not falling for Wentz's uh, move in motion, and you got about four or five white jerseys there to be able to, to greet Larkins. Marquis Dietz, Roy Alexander come back in as Fordham makes some changes as well. Takes out, taking out some of the big boys up front. Jose Lopez coming in at running back, number 25 for the Great Danes as well, standing next to Poffenbarger. Third and four. Whistle sounds. It'll be a timeout. Timeout called by Fordham. Important situa series right here for Alan Gant and the defense. 2.32 to go. U Albany on top, 21-13, knocking out the door. We'll step aside. More third quarter action coming up from Tom and Mary Casey Stadium after this timeout on Flow Sports. You get yourself to class. You show up for meetings at home and at work. Your flex is making time for yourself and your community, no matter what. Soon, CBTA will introduce its biggest flex yet with added mobility options that let you bike, scoot, and share. Wherever you go, however you choose to get there, you can count on CBTA. We're here to keep you safe and the region moving forward. Who do you want by your side when you're about to do something amazing? It's not about how much you have or who you know. This is a matter of trust. Because one can do it alone, but two can do it even better. CephQ and Capcom are now Broadview, giving you the power and service you deserve from your financial partner. When you wanna know who's by your side, open your eyes and take a look around. That's where we'll be. Welcome to Broadview.
Critical third down situation here for UAlbany, third and four. Ball at the four yard line between the four and the three. Poffenbarger. Jose Lopez to his right. Rolls, looks, fires. Alexander almost just off the fingertips with D. Rice Williams there in coverage. Great communication and trust there in Roy Alexander. By Reese Poffenbarger, right? Scrambling here, just directing him, telling him to go right, telling him to go left. Gets it last second. There thought there was a little bit of tug and contact, and the ball hits about everybody before it hits Alexander's hands and falls incomplete. Unfortunate break. Fourth and four here at an opportunity for you, Albany, put points on the board. John Apalco, 9 of 16 last year on field goals. It's not much more than an extra point where Bastoul is located at the 11 yard line. So a 21 yard field goal. Kick is up and booted through for the field goal for Apalco. You Albany gets points out of that drive, much needed points out of that drive to kind of slow the Fordham Express there, and it's 24-13. Points are points, right? You'll take them when you can get them, and I know the Great Danes are going to look back at a play second and goal at the one. And they did got a little fancy, could have gone up the middle, could have tried a QB sneak. Nonetheless, you get some points, and you're up 11 with only about 17-20 to go in this game. Defenses look good. Now a chance if you get a stop here. You know, you're getting towards the early part of the fourth quarter. Great Danes can start taking their time on offense, try to extend the lead, but... A lot of football left. Put together a nice drive, 10 plays, 71 they yards, yeah. 544. You know, so you burn a little bit of clock. You get it back a little bit of momentum. But maybe critically, you get your defense. Early in the season, you can do as much conditioning as you want. Yeah. You've got to get into season play before you're really in game condition, right. especially on defense when you're chasing around a guy like Montez and you've got some speedy receivers. You know, so that gives the defense a chance to kind of catch its breath a little bit. That's what the offense and you got to be always thinking, too. Don't need to necessarily rush so much to the line of scrimmage. Just think about the guys on the other side of the football getting that game condition ready, like you were just saying, Rich. Number 38, Sam Logan. MJ Wright is deep. And number two, MJ Wright to receive for Fordham. Jack Kaiser, last man on for Fordham. Sam Hogan. Set the boot this one for the Great Danes. 2.20 to go here in the third period. Hogan with a low line drive toward the sideline. Has to be played by the up back. Taken out over the 25-yard line for Ricky Parks. Tyler Muirworth there for the tackle, number 27. Kick returned by number nine, Ricky Parks. I think the Great Danes have done a nice job doing all night is putting a lot of different looks and pressures on C.J. Montez. You feel like he, he has not had as much time back there in the pocket as Reese Poffenbarger has on the other side. Credit the protection for the Great Danes too, but also credit that pressure being able to penetrate and get through consistently. Montez, low snap. Inside, makes the connection to Makai Felton. First reception for the senior out of Baltimore as he takes it out to the 30-yard line. It'll be a five-yard gain, second and five. That's complete to number one, Makai Felton, for a gain of about five yards. Front down by number 93. Elijah Hills, Hills on the play for the tackle. From the 30-yard line, second and five. Four. Under two minutes here to go on the third. High pass outside. Connection made there to Ricky Gonzalez, the second. He spins away and gets out first down yardage over the 35-yard line to the 37. Uh, tackle made by Amir Hall. Good elusiveness there by Ricky Gonzalez. One-on-one -on -one being able to separate. That's what you got to try to do as a wide receiver, especially on the far sideline. Try to be able to escape your guy, get positive yards, and get a first down here. Montez looks long. Way over the head of Gonzalez. Pass intended for number six, Cole nope, Thornton. Cole Thornton, number six. His Joe Conlon team, the best in New York State since 2012, 73 victories. 71 victories for the Giants. <laughs> I was going to say. 61 yeah. victories for the Jets, and in between their sacred heart was 64 yeah. victories. So. That's, a, that's pretty good company to be able to have the most wins for a New York football team, huh? You say you've got something over the Giants. That's yeah. not bad. 
Flag flies from the side. This will be a false, false start. start. Offense number 72. Five-yard penalty. Second down. Lucas Portez, the captain, 6'5", 304 out of Gaithersburg, Maryland. A three-year starter there, but this time gets called for a five-yard penalty. That'll push him back to second and 15. He's got to light up here if you're the Great Danes defense. Now a second and long. Chance to maybe put some pressure on here. A little third and long. If they could stop Montez. Montez throwing long on the outside. Got man-to-man -man coverage, but overthrows the receiver, Ricky Gonzalez, the second. Freshman out of San Antonio with Hall on the cover. Yeah, Hall's had a lot of instances so far in this first half where they're trying to test him one-on-one, -on -one and he's held, him held his own. The, the transfer from Richmond, two interceptions, 19 balls defended last year. Proved to be a pretty solid pickup so far in this first game. Not afraid to be out there on an island, if you will, one-on-one -on -one going against the other teams. One of their best receivers. Montez under pressure, flag on the play, gets hit there before he crosses the line of scrimmage. A.J. Simon does it again, but we'll see what the flag is. And it looks like it'll be a false start on Fordham, which should have killed the play. Yeah. Coach Gattuso already signaling the decline, so. Illegal formation. Okay. Offense. More than four plays in the backfield. Penalties decline. Fourth down. So the illegal formation rather than the false start. Yeah. False start would have killed the play. So in this case, that works out for UAlbany. As the defense comes out and does its job. Fourth and 15 now. Ball's on the 33. UAlbany will have a minute six in the third quarter. So credit here to first-year defensive coordinator Bill Nessett was the defensive line coach for several years, then the special teams coach. And his co-defensive coordinator, Darren Walls, this defense looking, honestly, you don't want to use the cliche saying again, but night and day, honestly, to how it started yeah. last year and been able to get some stops in some big situations. Only holding four to 13 points so far. A, a side foot shank there. That ball rolls you Albany's way as it comes out to the 37-yard line. Down there by Walker Atkinson. It'll be you Albany ball again. Good field position for the Great Danes. And you saw a moment ago some of the pressure that C.J. Montez has been feeling from this U Albany front line, and that was an issue last year. And the secondary paid the price for that because the front four was not getting the pressure. And you're seeing the pressure, and you're seeing the secondary really do a nice job as well. Exactly right, Rich. When the secondary's got you know a lot of time to be able to chase and try to track down some fast receivers, it's hard. The pressure's working tonight. Poffenberger rips one outside. May have been a gain of two as he makes the connection with Brevin Easton, pushed out of bounds by D. Rice Williams. We were speaking with Coach Catuso just before the game, Rich, and he said, you know, last year against Fordham, they didn't pressure nearly enough, and right. therefore a 93-point game. And you're seeing tonight already a lot of different pressures and blitzes to make Montez look uncomfortable so far. He just talked about how vanilla they were, and yeah. I think we've seen a lot of different things from you Albany tonight that will stand out in the film for other teams to look at and things they have to prepare for that maybe they haven't done in the past as whistle sounds with two seconds left on the clock. The play clock reset to 25. So if that's the case, I have to imagine that. The officials stopped the game because the play clock was not winding. Please set the play clock to 25 seconds. The game clock and the play clock will both start on my signal. So you Albany will just take this on the signal of the referee, wait the two seconds, and go on to the fourth quarter. Yeah. There it is. Not super dramatic there. No, right. We were waiting for like something, right? <laughs> something, it's like one play. Yeah. Fireworks yeah. going. Oh, we already had those. Nah. So yeah, yeah. The two <laughs> seconds wind down. We head to the fourth quarter. U Albany 24, Fordham 13. We're back with that final quarter of action here on Flow Sports.
Back here at Bob Ford Field at Tom and Mary Casey Stadium, the University of Albany and Albany, New York. Fourth quarter action. You Albany on top 24-13. And while the score is different, it's a similar situation right now, Michael, to what it was last year. You Albany taking a lead in the fourth quarter. Yeah. But what we're seeing from this defense is different than what we saw from exactly last year. Exactly right. Yeah. The, the confidence level, you can already see it, too, and how they've been able to perform already. And you want to be able to put this game away. Pop and Barger. On, well, your defense could play. Pop and Barger over the middle. Incomplete as he led Brevin Easton a little bit too far. That's intended for number 13. Brevin Easton is incomplete. We mentioned Faisal Aiden went uh, down with a cramp. Information for Matty Jones on the sideline is he would be able to come back. And he is walking around on the sideline, but has his helmet off. Right now it's Nate Larkins. Eight carries, 37 yards. Poffenbarger under heavy pressure. Steps. Oh, nice move by Poffenbarger as he just juked the player. Big gainer here for Reese as the sophomore slides out over the 42-yard line. Big run for Poffenbarger as he picks up 30 yards on that play. I was going to say, a nice 30-yard run up the middle. Sacked almost, not once, but almost twice here in the backfield as we, we take another look here, Rich. Constant pressure, makes a move, little sidestep, and then he just goes and open daylight, a nice safe slide getting down right at about the 42. Doing things, picking up right where he left off after that tremendous redshirt freshman season last year. Doing what he does best. And just critical to make that run and keep the drive going. Spins away from a defender there. He's going to throw it outside. And it's intercepted. No, oh. dropped. Right into the hands of Jack Lau. And then down onto the turf. You all, but he avoids disaster twice. First James Conway almost sacks Reese Poffenbarger. Look at this. Un nobody sees or picks up Conway. Not only after that, Paul Barger, risky throw against his body, looking for Renninger almost. It absolutely should have been picked if you're Jack Lowe. And Lowe had a lot of green ahead of him and not any black. A rare, almost rare mistake by Reese Poffenbarger, bailed out. The good ones like to trust that arm, and sometimes you trust it a little bit yeah. too much. Goes outside to make the connection here. Hicks with a nice move inside, gets out over the 30 first down yardage for the Great Danes. Tackle there made by number eight, Nathan Lindsay. One thing Hicks did not do a lot last year is drop the ball. Steady hands for the Great Danes. Big physical frame and nice little sidestep. Same move, not once but twice. Bringing it down to the 30-yard line. Led the team in touchdowns with six last year, 319 yards receiving. First and 10, Great Danes. Reliable and picked up chunk yardage at 14 and a half a game. Poffenbarger rolls, looks long, has a man in the corner if he can make the connection with Easton, but is he out of bounds? Touchdown! Wow. Brevin Easton just dragged the foot at the last moment. The referee thought about it and gave the Danes the score. I tell you what, if this stands, which I think it will, ref had a good view here as we take another look. Reese Poffenbarger yet again scrambling to his right. What a throw, and Brevin Easton we saw one on the far sideline, Rich, where he couldn't get the toe down earlier on in the first quarter, but this one looks like it's going to be good. What a throw and catch. Got a step on D. Rice Williams and stretched it out, did Easton. Transfer from Assumption where he had 12 touchdowns and was the Northeast 10 Rookie of the Year in 2019. You knew they were going to take a look at this one. It's too tight to that sideline. It's in the further review. Would be doing their jobs if they didn't take a look at this one for sure, especially on the scoring plays. 100% agree. 13, remaining, in, remaining in the fourth quarter, the previous play is under review. It's a great route by Brevin Easton, too. It's Poffenbarger again, just in motion. Makes it look effortless sometimes with his ability to throw it in coverage, tight windows as we watch the feet of Easton. Don't worry about that front one. It, it's either of you know, I, I, you know uh, we, it's been a night of inconclusive calls. And I mean, I, you know, I, this is why we're. I mean, the toe does. The, it's, it's either see if the toe drags or it's just enough to where the the front of his left foot 
touch is a little bit white or not. I don't know. It's another close one. And again, if these officials can't find enough irrefutable evidence, it's going to be 30 to 13. See if we can get another look at this from a different angle. There's that foot going down, the one that's in question, but not quite in the screen. Pretty cool shot of Brevin Easton's eyes watching Just the ball watching come in the right ball. there. And then the, the awareness to, to get the foot down as he's running right towards the corner. Senior slot receiver out of Severn, Maryland, doing a nice job there. Anthony Florio back under the hood. This, this stands, it'll be two catches for Easton, 31 yards and the touchdown. And <laughs> one of those was one yard, the other that 30 yard. After review, the ruling of the field stands. Touchdown. So Easton, a 30 yard touchdown, doing a great job just dropping that one foot in bounds. And U Albany comes out in the fourth quarter and lays down some lumber with a touchdown right on that first possession. Just a great drive, culminating in a great play with a 30 yard touchdown strike from Poffenbarger to Brevin Easton. Full credit to Poffenbarger on that one. Great mm. catch by Easton, but without the scramble by Poffenbarger early. As the extra point is good. That drive may have stalled at some point, and Fordham's got the ball back with momentum going the other way. Well, so. also, too, I mean, you know, six plays, 63 yards. Take a look back. Jack Lowe has a pick six in his hands. You all, but he absolutely capitalizes on that, and now it's an 18-point game. You think about a momentum swing. He runs that back. We got a whole different story. Right. Got Fordham on top with Uncle Mo completely on their side. Yeah. 13.23 to go. You have any football on Flow Sports brought to you by Bone & Joint Center, orthopedic excellence and exceptional care. And by Broadview, the official financial, in financial institution of the Great Danes, Broadview. Well, the defense has gotten a little bit of rest so far in the in the second half here on some of these lengthier drives. So now up 18, a little bit of a cushion with 13.23 to go, Rich. They have been impressive. A lot of different guys making plays in coverage. We've seen De Deshaun Winston and Amir Hall, the new transfers from Temple and Richmond, make some plays. All returners on the uh, the front, the off or defensive line rather, have made some plays. Joseph Greeny with a with a knockdown, Junkaj with the the sacks, AJ Simon all over. Hogan's kick down to the five. Return on the outside by Wright, who's upended at the 26-yard line. Nice tackle there by Kevin Angry. Flexing his muscles on that one, too, after laying the boom. One of the things you look at in the stats with this, Michael, is... is Nobody was even close to Fordham last year when it came to average plays per game. No. Well, there are 78 plays a game is what they're averaging. And right now, U Albany has a significant advantage in plays and time of possession. Right. So you're, you're doing what you need to do by holding on to that ball. Offense helps the defense in this situation. Mm. Luffridge breaks through. Out to an eight-yard gain. We talk about that defensive line, and it's some returning guys, some some chemistry up there, and they've done a nice job of pressuring Montez. Absolutely, yeah. And, and take a look earlier, a guy like Anton Junkage making a, a play earlier with a strip sack. Um, you know, the back-to-back -back in the uh, in, in in the first half was was key. Montez outside. Might be a flag out there. It's not. Catch made. Tackle made by Larry Walker Jr. If you're Fordham, it's starting to now creep into the situation where you want to be able to try and score at a little bit of a quicker pace, and you're seeing the offense get back to the line of scrimmage a lot quicker now. Outside blitz, picked up nicely by uh, Luffridge. Pass connection made at the 30-43 yard line. Thought Abraham was going to have the pick there. Makai Felton, I, I think Abraham did too. Yeah, good throw by Montez. Another look here. Montez looking for a side, and yeah, Abraham just couldn't get there. I'm like, I felt him with the catch. Montez under heavy pressure there as Abraham came through, and Montez just threw it away. 
we they talked we don't didn't really know a lot about Montez. It, it, it didn't play just the uh, three games out at New Mexico, so you didn't really have a chance to see a lot of him. But they talked about what a strong arm he has and yep. what, what they've seen in camp. And you're seeing that here. He drives the ball into oh. the receiver. Even on some of the throws where he overthrows guys, I mean, he's got a cannon for an arm. If he's got a guy wide open down the field, he's going to make that throw. Montez throwing long. Tries to get over the top of right, and a flag gets thrown. Bill Hackett in coverage there got tangled up in MJ Wright's legs. Wright went down, and the flag got thrown. Worst spot to be in is a defensive back. Back turn, not knowing where the football is. Make contact, no-brainer call. Pass interference. Defense number five. 15-yard penalty. First down. And another look here. One-on-one. -on -one. Talking to, speaking of Montez's arm, he goes deep. Basically almost a 50-yard throw, and that's, that's an obvious call. Hackett knocks MJ right down one-on-one, -on -one and Fordham now. Hasn't had to use a lot of clock, already at the Great Dance 28. It's easy to say from up here, but if Hackett doesn't make contact, I'm not sure that's a catchable ball for right anyways, right. based on the way he was kind of cir circling around. Luffridge next to Montez. Two receivers, both sides. Jaleel Johnson showing blitz, and he comes. Montez just slips down at the 25, 35-yard line. Wow. Got some pressure there from Dylan Kelly. Saw it coming and tried to duck under it. Cavalry, guys. Coming in there, led by Dylan Kelly. Again, Brian Abraham, who's has been making a name for himself this game and on this drive as well. Look credit Kelly with the sack. 11 tackles in the Baylor game to open things up last year. A player that walked on here and had a little chip on his shoulder yep. and, and clearly has earned his scholarship. Yeah. He is everywhere on the field, whether in coverage or securing a guy or blitzing like he is there. 42 is everywhere. Montez going long down the middle. No one home there as he overthrows Garrett Cody, who is a speedster, but maybe not quite that fast. Yeah, Cody was the leading receiver last year in that 48-45 uh, shootout against the Great Danes. And uh, Montez's arm, it's almost in essence, you're seeing it be a little too strong on some of these routes, right? He's overthrowing his guys by about a step or two. Four catches, 123 yards, and two scores in that game last year. Now here's a big third down for you, Albany. You've got them in third and long. You've got them where you want them. Yep. Now you need front pressure and good coverage in the secondary. Exactly right. And look at you got about five or six guys stacked up. And it's a good look because you don't know where it's coming from. Montez goes outside. Tough catch there as they battle along the sideline. This is in incomplete. So he was trying to get Thornton over there. Deshaun Winston with some pretty good coverage one-on-one -on -one down on the far sideline. Nice job not making contact, turning and looking for the football. Not wearing a flag from the official. That is really good coverage. That ball is going to be out of bounds anyway. So fourth and 17. And with 11.07 to go, C.J. Montez is still standing at the 40-yard line. I mean, it's about a 52-yarder yep. if they attempt a field goal here, so. A little outside the range of Brandon Peskin. Montez looks, looks. Now he'll run. Kelly will track him down. Going to get him before the first down. It looks like he did. Got him at the 25-26 yard line. Yes, he did. Kelly with a nice play to, to try and track down a guy in Montez who's quick for his 6'2", 200-plus pound frame. Everything's yeah. good back. Well done by Kelly as he gets the job done there, pushing him out of bounds. U Albany holds on fourth down. They'll take the ball with 10 minutes, 59 seconds to go. Great Danes with the lead, 31-13. We're back after this. Well, Caden Birdie with his first catch of the game for Albany as the Great Danes pick up seven on that first down play. Larkins the setback. Still haven't seen face all Aiden since he went out with the cramp. Low snap there handled nicely by Poffenbarger. 
Nice move there, change of directions by Larkins as he gets outside over the 40. Nice move. Tackle by Nathan Lindsay. Some nice flashes from both Faisal Aiden and Nate Larkins tonight, Rich. Larkins in particular with his elusiveness and his quick shift. When a guy's coming, just nice little simple cut angle, makes a lot of guys miss. And uh, after Birdie's reception, that's 11 different uh, guys with a reception tonight for the Great Danes. Talk about utilizing all their weapons deep in that depth chart. And they've talked about the weapons that they have on offense this year from a receiver standpoint. And they are deep. Bringing in a couple guys from Old Dominion, incorporating the tight ends, and the guys are return. Makes him tricky to scout. We're back here at Tom and Mary Casey Stadium. 9.36 to go. UAlbany on top, 31-13. Whistle sounds. It may have been a timeout called by UAlbany. No, there's a flag on the far side. Prior to the snap, timeout, Albany. So the great first and a half. get the timeout. 30-second timeout. Just before the flag flew, yeah. they got the timeout. So critical for the Great Danes to not give up yardage there. You want to keep things moving forward, even if it's methodically picking up three, picking up four, another first down. Just kind of matriculate down the field, as Marv Levy would say. Yes, exactly. Keep matriculating that ball. Keep taking time off the clock with only 9.31 to go and an 18-point cushion. A lot of complimentary football tonight for the Great Danes. Special teams included in that. Offense and defense has been solid. Reese Poffenbarger has looked good. And now, like you said, Rich, just try to keep getting some chunks. No penalties, no mental errors here with nine and a half to go. I think we talked about that earlier, but it bears repeating again is special teams. I mean, there's really only been, I'm thinking, one, maybe two times that the Danes have started in what I would consider negative territory, 25 yards back to the goal line. Yeah. It, you know, everything else has been out beyond the 25, closer to the 40 in a lot of cases. Some near midfield as well, where you don't have to go that far. 50 yards as opposed to 75, 80 is a huge difference. And you've seen that a lot. Credit to Jackson Parker, Roy Alexander, in right. the blocking in special teams, too, because right. they can't go anywhere unless the guys in front of them are blocking. Got to skate your lane and block your guy. That's right. First and 10, balls at the 40. Two near side wide receivers. Larkins right behind Poffenbarger. Got the handle. Big wide open hole there for him to run. One man to beat. Slips that tackle. Good hustle from behind by Jack Lau to make that saving tackle, or else Larkins might be headed to the Great Danes end zone. Looks like about a gain of 30 there, Rich. Uh, getting to the, yeah, just about 30. And Larkins is really piecing together some nice chunk plays here, especially in this fourth quarter. These last two drives, gets it down to the Fordham 31. 29 yards on the run there for Larkins. Up to 10 for 75. He's getting closer to 100 yards here. Griffin Woodall checks in. Levi Wentz comes out. Caden Birdie looking to the sideline to get the call. There's about nine different people making calls on the sidelines. Just got to figure out which is the hot one. Yeah. Poffenbarger holds. Fires over the middle. Had Birdie, but incomplete. D. Rice Williams on the coverage. Yeah, he's got a cannon, and it's talking with Reese Poffenbarger this week in practice. One thing, there was a question asked to him about, you know, do you change anything in the offseason about your mechanics? He said, no, you can see why not. He's got a cannon. He's got very good throwing mechanics as well. Whatever happened last year, he's carried it over to this year, and he looks like the same guy. Yeah, sharpen the axe, Reese said, is yeah. really what you need to do at this point. Right. And he's still not afraid to throw in a tight window right there, and he trusts his guys to make the play, and he'll get it there. Face all Aiden back in for the Great Danes, his first play since coming out with the cramp. Poffenbarger takes the snap, gives to Aiden inside, big hole there as Aiden busts through. He's got room to run down the left sideline, tracked down from behind by number 27, Mike Courtney, but it's another UAlbany first down as now the holes are starting to open. Yeah. And Aiden you know, back down again after a gain of 22. I was going to say, wouldn't that be something? His first play back in the touchdown, it gets a hard-earned 22, and he's he's down still on that far sideline as he goes out right about the nine-yard line. Aiden and Larkins both stepping up here tonight, combined for over 100 yards. 147 now for UAlbany, 25 carries for 147 yards rushing. 
Go back and look at the film on that one, especially in the second half, and yeah. you see what this offensive line is doing to open some of those holes and the bursts that both rush, ru uh, running backs are able to hit when they or make when they hit that hole. Yeah, those guys up front, especially in particular a veteran guy like Scott Hausman or you see a guy like Ozzie Hutchinson who we talked to this week on that left side. When Nate Larkins makes that switch, Hutchinson's right there to be able to block for him to help get outside. Great point, Rich. The offensive line really helping, and the great teams being able to run that football at a pretty efficient level throughout the second half. They've got such good experience, save Nathan Latulup, who's the freshman, but really an impressive freshman with good feet for a guy his size, you know, 6'7", 281 out of Canada. Yep. But otherwise, you're either juniors, seniors, or graduate students on that line. Yep. You know, with Ozzy Hutchinson, Austin Mosier, Scott Hausman, and Will Murata. Right. It's guys that have played together, so you've got that chemistry already built. Not looking good there for Aiden as far as the cramps go. He's... You can see the pain in his face as Jay Geiger helps him off the field, the trainer for the University of Albany. Tough. Want to be able to see him try to fight this one out, but you can see the grimacing there. This is walking a little gingerly, but heading over towards his team huddle. Wearing Todd Sibley's number last year, that number zero. Liked you, Albany, just because he wanted to feel wanted. And I think the coaching staff, he said, did a nice job of when they came here, they really stayed connected to him and made him feel wanted. And he had other opportunities and chose you, Albany, I think because of that feeling with the coaching staff, that connection. Exactly. And speaking of connection, there's head coach Contuso talking to him right now. A little pat on the helmet. So Woodall in at running back. Successful play they ran before this time. They go over the top. Whoa. Broken up. Look for a second like you, Albany, might have the touchdown. Dale Perkins knocks it away late. And that was one-on-one -on, -one on the outside. They go over the top this time to Birdie. I thought they might look to that Woodle play underneath. Yeah. And instead, a little trickery there by running Woodle there and going over the top to Birdie. Good-looking play. Almost worked, too. Throwing it in literally almost an impossible window in tight coverage. Again, Poffenbarger not afraid to do that. Doesn't matter if a guy's draped over his own receiver. Birdie, the outside receiver on the near side. Wentz inside of him. They'll run it with Larkins. Gain of one. I think it was Eli Armstrong that came flying up the inside to push that one toward the middle and help Richard Hofus get the tackle. 747 and rolling. Great Danes on top, 31-13. If you're the Great Danes, you want to be smart here, right? Third and goal at the nine. We, you don't need to... To go for something fancy, or if it's not there in the end zone, don't go for it, because even if you end up with a field goal, you're up by three touchdowns. Larkin's still out there. Near side is Wentz. Hicks on the far side. Fade to the uh, in far corner of the end zone as Wentz tried to go up and get it. The Hill Perkins there with coverage, and you Albany will kick the field goal or attempt to kick the field goal. How many times have we seen you Albany try to fade, right? Seems like it's a different guy right into that corner of the end zone. Yeah, trying to fade risky on a one on one tight coverage, but good, thro well thrown ball by Reese Poffenbarger and Opalka to try and extend this to three touchdowns. Ball spotted at the 15 16 yard line, so a 26 yard field goal attempt. For John Apalco, the junior out of Springdale, Pennsylvania. Knocks it up. And good from 26 yards out. UAlbany extends the lead to 34-13. A good offensive series there. Move the ball down the field, burn the clock, and now you've got the 34-13 lead. We'll take the time out here from Tom and Mary Casey Stadium. Great Danes on top.
7.14 to go here from Tom and Mary at Casey Stadium. U Albany on top 34-13. Sam Hogan set to kick this one off in a decidedly different thus far fourth quarter than it was last year. And MJ, you were on that call, yeah. so you remember exactly what it was like. Oh, absolutely. You talk about a back-and-forth wild game when you witness a game with 93 combined points and record-breaking offensive performances, including 412 yards through the air by Reese Poffenbarger. It's certainly a game I'll never forget. Uh, at Fordham, and, and this is one where the, you, you look at the Great Danes, and you got 7-14 to go, and you've got to be pleased if you're head coach Greg Katusa with everything you've seen so far on all ends. Nice return out over the 30, but a flag behind it. Tyler Mirworth on the tackle, his second special teams tackle as he brings Mason Hatfield During the return, illegal block back, receiving team number six. After this into the goal. Ninth Fordham penalty of this one in this game. U Albany was seven for 60 yards. So in that aspect, if you're looking for something to, if you're really looking for something, that would be something to look at film and say, all right, we got to clean this up, guys. Yeah. That's too many penalties. Right. The penalties there, fortunately, hasn't cost your team so far in this game, but that's something to quickly go back to the film room. You're right, Rich, to the drawing board if your coach could do we got to clean some of these things up. And a lot of those for some self-inflicted, it's like a couple fall starts right after you had an, an encroachment. Right. You, you earned five, then you gave it back. Right. Three receivers near side. Luffridge up the middle. Out to the 22. Check that out to the 17. Quickly, Fordham will get back to the huddle. Ball carried by number 15, Julian Luffridge. Nice nine play, 67 yard drive, and 345 for the Great Danes on that field goal last time out. And yeah, Montez is, how about that? Right away, that's Junkaj again. Again. Third sack of the game for Anton Junkash to go along with a forced fumble. This one relatively unguarded, untouched. Possibly the easiest one he's had so far. And number four is making his presence known. And he's dangerous right there on that right side of the line for the great dance all night long. Stack receivers both side. Montez straight back. Dumps it over the middle of Luffridge. Kelly comes up. Luffridge steps around him, but drives him right into the Albany hands of Ori Jean Charles. Pass complete to number 15, Julius Luffridge. Number 15, Ori Jean Charles with a tackle. Fordham, you wonder when they start trying to take advantage and opportunity of some, some big plays, try to take some shots down the field, but. Certainly seen that Montez has the arm. Yeah. Again, that double stack receivers. Trying to clear out the middle for Luffridge. Nothing doing as he gets to the 20-yard line. Might be enough for a first down. Looks like he might have just gotten it. Ball right at the 20-yard line. He has to move the chain, so first down. Backside How pressure. Four. Wow, is Junkaj having a half? Match his a number. Game. Match his number. Four sacks. Easily defensive player of the game so far. Anton Junkaj. Good pressure wow. there. Wraps up that leg. And he's winning the battle against the left tackle, David Umbamenya, the junior. He's been he's been winning that matchup all night. Making the junior uncomfortable. Evan Menya moving over from right tackle to that key left tackle position. Ball strip. Uh, helmet, helmet came AJ's. off. I thought it was the ball. <laughs> it did for a second, too. I, I was about to say the same thing, and it's A.J. Simon again working against Ebimenya, and you're seeing 76 come off the field right now as A.J. Simon was giving him problems there. 4.30, the clock stopped as the field judge from the back coming in to stop it. They'll reset the play clock. Be third and 15. Play clock rolls from 40. Ball spotted on the 15, yard line. 15 yard line is where the ball is spot. Florida. Montez throwing long, looking outside for Cody. Good work inside by Amir Hall. 
So he did a nice job just maintaining that inside presence. Yeah, he's been doing a nice job at a lot of one-on-one -on -one deep balls. Hall's right with the receiver step-by-step -step with good coverage all night. And from their own 15-yard line, it'll be fourth and 15 for them. 4-13, they'll bring Hazlitt out to punt. Down 21 with 4.13 to go. Is that a white flag? I tell you what, yeah. I know it's, you know, you're giving you all the ball at the 15-yard line, but you're down 21 with 4.13 to go, Rich. That's a good point. I, I don't see why you don't just go out there, try to take a deep shot or do something to try to get the first down. Smart move by Parker. Fair catch. Be safe. You've got the ball at the midfield. Exactly. Great atmosphere going on on the Albany sideline with the score 34-13. Matty Jones has that. Yeah, Rich, it's fantastic down here on the sideline. We've had a packed stadium. We've been privileged enough to be right next to the cheerleaders and the dance team, and they've been getting the crowd absolutely fired up. It's been a great night here so far. Let's hope to keep it coming. Thanks, Matty. 34-13, you Albany. Giving a lot of energy to this sellout crowd tonight, 8,500. Good way to get the season started, as we mentioned earlier, first time since Greg Atuso's rookie year as a head coach that they've opened the season at home. Poffenbarger handing it off. Woodall takes it up the middle. Host of tacklers there. Almost the whole team <laughs> wrapped him up, yeah. Timeout called by Fordham. Their first one timeout left, their second timeout called this half. We'll take a step aside as well with three minutes and 54 seconds to go. UAlbany on top. You get yourself to class. You show up for meetings at home and at work. Your flex is making time for yourself and your community, no matter what. Soon, CDTA will introduce its biggest flex yet with added mobility options that let you bike, scoot, and share. Wherever you go, however you choose to get there, you can count on CDTA. We're here to keep you safe and the region moving forward. Who do you want by your side when you're about to do something amazing? It's not about how much you have or who you know. This is a matter of trust. Because one can do it alone, but two can do it even better. CephQ and Capcom are now Broadview, giving you the power and service you deserve from your financial partner. When you wanna know who's by your side, open your eyes and take a look around. That's where we'll be. Welcome to Broadview. At the University at Albany, we see greatness in you. There's passion and purpose, a fierce curiosity, ready to blaze big ideas and tackle the tough questions. We see grit, drive, determination. The University at Albany is home for dreamers and achievers just like you. The world needs greatness, and you are one of the greats. Great thing teams this coming week. Back here at Tom and Mary Casey Stadium. UAlbany football brought to you by CDPHPA, Plan for Life, and by NYSCOPA, representing over 30,000 New York State employees and retirees from the Security Service Unit. Also brought to you by Town Square Media and 104.5 The Team ESPN Radio, the Capital Region's home for New York sports, including Yankee baseball, Buffalo Bills football, and UAlbany Great Danes athletics. Tune in every weekday to hear Big Board Sports with Roger Weiland and myself from 10 to 1 in the drive with Charlie and Dan from 3 until 7. Local sports on local radio. Check it out. Sam Burkell gets through and makes the tackle for a loss as he halts Nate Larkins in the backfield. Let's take a look at our CDTA rapid rusher. It is indeed Anton Junkaj, who just had a phenomenal game tonight. Five solo tackles, three sacks, the forced fumble as well, which was key to really giving you Albany some of that momentum towards the end of the half. Exactly right, and, and making some big plays in the first half where I really think the momentum completely shifted, Rich, is where he makes those back-to-back -back plays, and you Albany goes up from 14-6 to 21-6. to 6. 
and a couple big sacks and tackles here late. Really making Devin, David Mbanyema uncomfortable on the left tackle spot. Junkage uh, dominating the uh, the offensive line of Fordham, especially here when it seems like you Albany needs him to the most for big plays. He's there to step up. Senior transfer out of Nassau Community College from Port Jervis, New York. Big year last year, 38 tackles, four and a half sacks, and off to another great start this year. Yeah. Reese Poffenbarger slides through there as he goes down. Thought there might be some extracurricular activity. Jack Lowe there for the tackle. I was going to say at this point in the game, you just want to be careful. There's no, no fireworks or any extracurriculars that aren't needed, right, with a game. Out of reach at this point for, for Fordham. And if you're Coach Catuso, again, you, you've got to like what you've seen so far. Really in all phases, unlike, you know, outside of cleaning up the penalties, right? Besides that, they haven't cost your team right. significantly. But uh, other than that, really good utilization of both through the air and on the ground on offense and defense, the pressure. And this defense, I could see why they were optimistic. Holding Fordham to 13 points. No easy task. No, I don't get it. It doesn't matter if tomorrow it's here or not. Right. I, you know, the, it's, you know, Montez is a good quarterback, and he's shown that at times tonight, that he's got the strong arm, he's got the good feet, and they've done a nice job just keeping him in the pocket, not letting him get out. They talked about that with a running quarterback. You've got to make sure you know where he is at all times, and they've done a nice job, talked about different ways they could do that. Exactly. Made him uncomfortable, and guys like Garrett Cody and MJ Wright are still back on this team, and the secondary has done a nice job. Take a look at our player of the game tonight brought to you by Broadview Federal Credit Union and none other than Reese Poppenbarger. We might say that one or two times this year. 253 yards so far and the four touchdowns to get the Great Danes off to a good start. Exactly right. And, and again, turnover free football if you're Reese Poppenbarger too. That's another reason why he's so dynamic and so good because he just does not turn the ball over and he's a very accurate quarterback and it showed tonight really picking back up right where he left off. And, and when you when you don't have a Todd Sibley next to you, you have to worry about, like, does he try to do too much because he's not sure right. what he has at running back? Because the quality running backs, but they're new, so you don't know what you have. And he didn't tonight. He stayed within himself. He exactly. did what he had to do. He trust the, trust the system. Nice catch there by Pastula, and he gets the punt off. A nice one as it angles away from the return man, so it rolls out of bounds at the 25-yard line. And a great Dane down. It's Ori Jean Charles. Look like, again, you might see some cramping. It's a little bit warm in the 70s today. Mm. Or tonight, a little warmer on the turf, as always. It was a great night for football. That's for sure when it started, right? Really Picture has perfect. been. Yeah. And all we talked about, you know, the possibility, you look at the forecast and there was thunder, there was lightning, you know, out about 6 o'clock tonight out in Buffalo, they were having a big storm and thunder and lightning, and you wonder if that's going to get here. It hasn't. I know it's 2.52 to go. <laughs> Hopefully I don't jinx this, but. Yeah. Uh, so Fordham on offense, 38-yard line. Montez straight back. Now runs, gets outside. He'll angle to the sideline where he'll cross the 30 and get shoved out of bounds. Bradley Aguike, the junior out of Gilderland, New York. And, and the, uh, the great Danes are doing a little barking as, uh, as he runs out of bounds there. Montez kind of took the uh, scenic route back to the yeah. huddle there. Yeah, it looks like he did a little bit, but I tell you what, his speed is dangerous. You saw flashes of it there. That's a testament to this defense not being able to allow him to use his legs when under pressure and dress all night long. Montez looks, throws outside. Thornton goes up to get it. Gets pulled down. Amir Hall got a hand in there. Knocked that ball away. That's intended for number six, Cole Thornton. Number one, Amir Hall on the coverage. From the line, we'll catch up with head coach Greg Atuso and Matty Jones immediately following the game to get the coach's thoughts on what looks to be a convincing U Albany victory on opening night here at Tom and Mary Casey Stadium. Outside Oof. pass connection there to Jaden Allen. Big hit laid by Brian, by Amir Hall. He's a guy that's really made his presence felt tonight. A lot of pass breakups and showing his physical stature. Two here, Rich. I mean, you know, 6'1", 200 I, at the end. That's a, that's a solid size corner. Montez, shovel pass. Luffridge gets hit about the 42-yard line. 
Dylan Kelly once again, adding to his tackle totals. Wagner next for Joe Conlin and this Fordham Rams team. They'll then take on UB Stoneham. Stonehill, rather, and then they'll open the Patriot League against Georgetown on September 30th. Montez looks. Once again, the shovel pass and a big hit there. Incomplete. Whew. As the lumber was laid by Michael Lucien. Wow. Couple big hits here late. This defense has not lost its energy or a step all 60 minutes. And you're seeing two of the biggest hits of the game on the last drive with the game's out of reach. Yeah, another look here. Good patience, shovel pass again, and Lucien just boom, and the ball goes straight in the air. And the thing you love is not only did Lucien lay the lumber, he had a full wrap on him. So yeah. it, was a, it was a good technical tackle with a big hit, as opposed to just going for the boom. Exactly. Seen a lot of good te technical tackling tonight by this team overall. Ball's on the ground. That's how it's kind of gone tonight for, yep. for Fordham. Not a lot of breaks their way and really never got too comfortable. When you saw a chance early on in that second half, the play I look back to is Jack Lowe. I think that's yep. the play where you could have seen in the second half where the game changes and then that touchdown and the great catch by Brevin Easton. Yeah. Here we go. That's a great call because that did, you know, it was right in the hands and sometimes the, the eyes get so big. He sees yep. the yellow end zone on the other side like I'm right there. And by the way, that's easy for me to stand up here wearing a, a jacket and tie and not being down on the field with guys running after me. Will they so. let us on the field after to try I it, maybe? I don't think they will. <laughs> Hazlitt's kick. Caught at the 25-26 yard line by Parker. And with 30 seconds left on the clock, all that's left is for one kneel down for Reese Poffenbarger. And the Great Danes have a victory in their season opener. First time since 2014 uh, the coach is getting into it. Jared Ambrose celebrating with the guys, and I'd be proud too. The offense looked good. But Bill Nessett and Darren Waltz, some credit there on defense. Being able to, to work together here, 13 points with Fordham, who have a lot of their guys back on offense, albeit a new quarterback, and Montez showed some potential. Long season, but what a performance. First home opener here in a, in a decade, and... A 21-point victory. All right, Greg Gattuso is going to go home and look at the schedule for next year and figure out how he can schedule the season opener at home for next yeah, year. So 2-0 yeah. and in season home openers uh, in Greg Gattuso's career. So a nice one here as the clock rolls down in the final 10 seconds as you Albany Great Danes will walk out of Tom and Mary Casey Stadium victors to start the 22-23 season. Let's take a look at what's coming up for the U Albany Great Danes the rest of the way. They'll be at Marshall at Hawaii, my friend. You get to make that trip. That'll be fun. Morgan State back home against Villanova to open the CAA schedule and then against the Towson in the fifth game of the season. That's the clocks are at zero, 34-13. Some really impressive work by you, Albany, today. Really impressive work, uh, indeed, Rich. And, you know, Reese Poffenbarger, obviously our, our Broadview player of the game with, with four touchdowns through the air, over 100 yards on the ground, and the defense looked really good as we take a look at the, the final stats. You, Albany, leads in almost every category tied in penalty yards, clean that up, a time of possession, more first downs. That translates to a victory a lot of times. Some clean football, some turnover-free football. And they get the win on opening night. 399 yards, total yardage for you, Albany. That's a nice number right there. Holding Fordham, a very prolific offensive team last year, to 235 yards. So you, you wrap that all up, and there's so many positive things to look at in this. And again, going back to special teams, giving them the position. You build the confidence with the special teams providing you a position. And we saw that right on early. It seemed like the first three, four returns, whether it was Jackson Parker or Roy Alexander, they were really able to set the Albany up. And like you said earlier, not in negative position. You're in positive yardage. You're not having to do too much to get down the field, which is great. You've been with this team a while. A game like this, what does it do as you go forward against two FBS teams now? And, and really, you're upping the level. No disrespect to Fordham whatsoever, no. but you're upping the level now. What does this do when you can take that with you into those next two games? It just generates so much confidence for the team, right? You're going against a Marshall team that beat Notre Dame last year. That people forget, they return a lot of guys, too. So it's not going to be easy. And then Hawaii as well, going against some FBS schools. The confidence overall in the locker room, in the coaching staff. I can't wait to see it on the road with Roger when we go to Marshall. But it's going to generate confidence as opposed to last year when you lose by 59 points against Baylor. Right. It's a tough start. 
wins help. And wins translate to confidence. And this is a, this looked like a confident team on the field already. And going up against a team where, you know, if you're Coach Caduso, they're, they're not going to be giving you much of a chance. And you go out there and show what you just did. Yeah. That can carry over. Uh, you made a good point when you talk about what they did last year with Baylor. And, and Coach Catuso made this point as well about, you know, starting with those guaranteed games. And those those games that it's, it's almost, you know, it's guaranteed money, yes, but it's almost guaranteed you're going to lose. Right. So, you know, you, you look at those things, and, and, and this maybe gives them that, that little bit of momentum that they need, and yeah. I, I'm sure they're going to go into the film room tonight or tomorrow or whatever and just be joyous about all the good things you know that happened in this one. Coach Catuso making his way over to Matty Jones on the sidelines. Matty's with the victorious head coach. Coach, congratulations. You'll want to know this season. How is the feelings here tonight oh, in front of a sold-out crowd? Feels great. The fans were fantastic all night. We love having them. We got the UA You Know chant going. It was it's just a good, really great night. We're going to enjoy it tonight and come back tomorrow so I'll get ready for the next game. So, Reese Pospenberger was named our player of the game today. He picked off right off where he left off last season. What are your thoughts on him and how, how he's playing moving forward? He's just he's a really good football player. He, you know, he loves the game. He competes like crazy. Made some huge plays out there for us tonight, and uh, he led us to a, a big victory. Yeah. Congratulations, Thank Coach. You. Go celebrate with the team. Thank you, Matty. 34-14 is our final score here. Final thoughts, Michael Johnson Jr. on this UAlbany victory and really getting this season off to a good start. Really impressed. What stood out to me was the defense and how well they played. 13 points, that's the big thing. When you average and allow 34.1 points a game last season. But Coach Catuso said it before the game here, Rich, when you know you go from last place in the, st the, st the conference in defense and you move your way up to almost halfway through at about seventh. You know, that's been able to, to step it up at a great job and a great defensive performance at a nice win on opening night here for the Great Danes. Great job by you as well, partner, tonight. Yeah, enjoyed it, Rich. Fun work with you. Yeah. Rogers back for the Marshall game and for the remainder of the season. For Michael Johnson Jr. and Matty Jones, I'm Rich Becker saying so long from Bob Ford Field at Tom and Mary Casey Stadium on the campus of UAlbany, where the final score is UAlbany 34, Fordham 13. Thanks for watching tonight. It's been a presentation of Flow Sports. So long, everybody.